Good morning one and all. It's bright and early here in Australia. I'm having a crack at broadcasting a little bit different hour currently, mainly because I'm awake. Um, I've been fussing around with my microphone to try and give you a bit of better sound, a little less breathing noise when I'm, we're running around. Um, today we're going to continue our Let's Play through on Satisfactory for Beginners. Honestly, uh, I'm having quite a lot of fun with this uh, Let's Play. So, I hope people will learn a little bit from it. Um, so, yeah, let's get to it. I've been working pretty hard on the uh, noise gate issue with OBS, so I'm trying to cut out all the uh, redundant breathing that we get from our um, in game, so. And take a little bit to load in this game. I'd love to know what some of the uh, big worlds that people do in this game, how long it actually takes them to load. So. I usually would cut this out and have the game loaded up ready for everybody, but I wanted to kind of show you how long um, gamers or YouTubers actually wait to try and get things working for you so that when you come in, it's nice and convenient. You know, just to share a little bit of it. I can see that we were saving up our coal ready to upgrade the um, coal generators to give us more power because the one thing we're definitely suffering of is a lack of power I believe yeah our capacity is high but that's only because of the um, biomass burners so we seem to have everything we need let's check out we've got some more for the Miners, got a couple of upgrades. What we will do is run around and get a few more upgrades before we do anything. Now I have been working pretty hard to try and fix up any noise issues or whatnot. It can be a little frustrating because at times it works perfectly well, then you'll actually get into the gameplay and start doing stuff and, you know, the stuff you've been trying to work on then sounds horrible. But that's the joys of trying to do some YouTubing. And I love to thank everybody who's been subscribing to the channel to help me out. I never thought I'd even get past 10 subscribers. I'm up to 71, which is a, a huge um, step for me. Now, in case anybody does wonder and ever wants to, you're always welcome to ask me questions in my live chat. Um... When you just jump on, that's um, it will take me a second to notice when it pops up, especially if I'm concentrating on the gameplay. So I apologise if I don't get to you immediately, but I do see it all it is on my lovely laptop screen to my right, where you're actually getting my um, stream from. So to set up and do streaming. What I've done is I've got two main screens for my gaming PC. One I'm watching OBS from, so I literally have a mirror of my gameplay to the left. I have my gameplay on the center, and anything that comes up from the stream on my laptop to the right. So I do have three screens going, trying to monitor audio quality, try, and I fuss with that here and there to try and make it a bit better for everybody. And I've also got, you know, monitoring in-game chat, which unfortunately for now I still have to lean over to read. Uh, losing my uh, vision as I get older. Not as bad as Evil Jester, who's almost blind as a bat, who I commonly play with, as people know, especially with uh, games like Generation Zero. But uh, my old friend there, I really feel sorry for him in that regard, and uh, he has the same respect for me and my bloody illness, I know that. 
Mm. I'm essentially just trying to get some upgrades for the um, coal power plants. So to make sure that we can produce the extra um, stuff we need on the belts. So we can definitely run the extra um, power. Because being able to essentially forget about our power in some ways so we can build stuff and continue the factory is extremely important in this game. Now I do know a lot of people watch my um, videos after the fact and I really appreciate that. Um, certainly makes me feel good to at least know that people actually do enjoy watching it. Alright, so we've even got more iron nodes here, and these are normal. So these are really going to help us with our factory expansion. We'll definitely need more um, limestone. And this rivet gun is awesome. I love this thing. It's definitely not as good as the assault rifle or the later game weapons, but as I've said, I've never actually even unlocked... Well, I have unlocked them, but I've never actually used them, so... I have gotten to a certain stage in this game where I pretty much know how to use everything. But later on, once we get to stages where I haven't actually um, used the stuff, it's going to be some interesting gameplay. We'll be learning together. A lot of people... Um, get asked a lot online, especially YouTubers, about, you know, have you played the game a lot before you actually have a go at it? These type of things. It's like, well, most of the time, we most of the YouTubers I know at least have a crack at a game before they put it on their channel because, you know, you don't want to look completely stupid when you're playing games. Like, it's not going to help anybody in some ways, but it's always good to show the learning experience as well, show how different people learn different things, and it goes to show you that we all enjoy making mistakes playing games because you learn from them. So, you do not have to get shit 100% perfect in games. It's a bloody game for Christ's sake. Just enjoy it. I say that because so many of my friends... Um, Crack the shits when they do even the most basic thing wrong in a game. It's like, guys, seriously, it's a game. Just respawn, you'll be right. Oi! Cheeky bastard. Come on. Bloody flanked me. This is why you leave these on your person, typically. Because it comes in handy. The great thing is, while we're doing this, most of our power is still running. Um... We're able to run around and explore and collect things and whatnot, and the base keeps going, keeps making awesome stuff that we need. Um, we don't have to be back on a time schedule now because, you know, we have the coal power going. That was the whole thing about as soon as you can get coal power going and move away from using biofuel, it allows you to free up to do basically whatever you want to do. You know, like, this game has some seriously awesome places to visit, some interesting enemies to fight, um, some great bloody locations, like, seriously, they've done some great work on the maps. When these little beggars 
don't sneak up on you, you slay them fairly easy, especially the smaller ones. Like they're really the beginning little buggers. But uh, when um, you come across their bigger cousins, they take quite a lot of uh, killing. Now these are great. You have to use a water breaker or something. It kind of drills down and makes the geysers squirt and whatnot. But that's a much later game stage stuff for us. Um, it's good for wanting to set up a, um, a production plant right in this area. Now these guys, I learnt, um, are a lot easier to take on from range. So don't try and stay too close to them because it allows you time to kind of avoid their attacks. Like, I still take a bit of damage doing it, but as you can see, compared to my usual uh, gamble with these guys, I've survived with a lot less damage, and there was two of them. So where'd his friend go? Ah. Oh, well. There it is. The ranged weapon against these guys really makes a difference. And you have to kind of anticipate, they're going to anticipate where you're going to move, so you have to kind of counter anticipate. Strafing is a, a wonderful thing. But this is why we made 50 rounds for this to take out with us. I'd love to know when they're going to actually include a use for these whips in the game, which is work in progress stuff. I get it, it's work in progress, but it's been work in progress ever since I started playing this game, so when's it going to be put in? What's it going to be used for? Just check behind us. Here comes his friend, and laid up beside each other. So we can't get through here. Oh, we can, but we'd be going through a lot of our um, jellies. Well, I'll show you. You come in, you start getting hurt. Okay, so here's a golden opportunity, literally. So let's see if we can get up there. Might need to get on here. So you're watching your health meter. There we go. So you can do it. You just got to make sure you got the jellies in hand. And there we go. As long as you're just munching on those as you're running around, you can get in there, get whatever, whatever you need and get out. You don't have to use a gas mask. You just have to have a good supply of those little um, berries. I like calling them jellies just for something different. So what's that one? It's a normal node. So there's a lot of good nodes out there, like the normal stuff, not just the impures. So it's all about bringing it back to base to be used, really, in the end. That wasn't a bad find. Like, it's not a purple, but it's better than the uh, greens. And we'll pick up some of these to replace what we've been chewing on. So we'll add those to there. So there we go. It's all in one pile. But I do love the fact that in-game, it's so easy to see where you've been or where you've got to go. Oh, yeah, he's a biggie. Oh, he despawned. I don't know. Respawned him there. All right, so... We're not going to fuss with him too much until we get one of these going.
because he tanks a lot of damage, actually. So if you're going to fight him, fight him smart. So might be able to hit him. Oh, that was a good shot. So as you can see, as they get away, they start to kind of lose render. Gotta maintain where you're at. There we go. So I've got three alien carapaces out of that guy. But look at this. Berry Bonanza. It's worth fighting him just to come over here and get all the berries. Now, you do use these in a recipe later on for the um kind of like a, a healing breather. So there we go. We're on top. We're pretty much back to where we were with the berries now. But uh, so far we've gotten four of the greens and uh, one of the yellows. So we're not doing too bad. We're pretty much ready to go start our upgrade for the um, power supply. But we'll keep just running around the area for just a little bit to kind of explore it. Now, I see on other people's uh, playthroughs of this that they have a map for the game. I still have not figured out what that is. As I said, this is for beginners. Not sure whether it's a mod to be able to use the map or whether it's just something in game that I have not nutted out yet. I could probably look up the controls, but eh, where's the fun in that? Some lovely supplies. What can we throw out? We honestly don't need the uh, leaves. Because we can get them anywhere. And motors are something we're not even building yet. So it's worth collecting them. What's it going to take to open this? 40 megawatts. So here's a question. If we go to our power. Biomass gens. We build two of them. We link them up together, link up the device, split the wood, actually we can't, chuck the wood in, uh, in this case we will just collect some leaves real quick. Chuck that on, open up as soon as we can. And whoosh. Alright, so what's in this? We'll take the wood. Get rid of this. Because what was the point of collecting all that uh, wood if we're not going to keep it, hey? Well, we could probably use this little guy for power slug scanning. So there's a power slug in this direction. So, uh, kind of feel like guys out of Star Trek now. Uh, Captain, uh, they're, uh, get readings on the, uh, scanner over here. So we're getting close. Hey, look at that. Our little tricorder works. Alright, so, nothing in the area now. Oh, yeah, we're getting a signal. Best way to do signal scanning is you move onto the signal, then you move off it. So it gives you a directional finding. I would say we've got somewhere down here to go. So we've got to find a way down there without dying. So it looks like over here is the way. Oh, hello, my friends. Oh, 
Probably shoot the one closest to you. Considering there's there three of them, we took one hit. That's not bad. So let's eat some berries. Oh, I forgot to breathe. Oh, there it is. Collect that slug. Thank you. So we've got another one this way. Say be up the hill. Yep. It really does make your life a lot easier trying to find these little beggars. And try not to hit right click. Okay, so it's construction time. This is why you run around with stuff on you. Great thing is, every time you build something, you get 100% of the resources back, so why not? If you didn't get 100% of the resources back, if you're going to build something, you might as well leave it there permanently. Because, seriously? Alright. So, we can't get up this area necessarily. So... You do this, chuck on your little tower there, jump across, and there he is. So that's up to seven. Well, that's my favourite number, so let's get out of here. And so that's enough for now. We've done well. So if you want to get back down, quite easy. Collect the stuff on the way. And we're down, no damage. Now how do we get home? Easy, look, big stick. Follow that. There we go. Top the berries up. Oh, wow, I can't believe I missed that. Okay, so I'm saying things. What I am going to do, because I don't actually care anymore... If you really get scared by spiders, you got arachnophobia mode, but seriously, come on, guys. So, let's see if there is a map. Open map. Zed. Okay.
Okay, don't know why it's not actually opening up a map. Maybe it's something you have to build. All right, so that looks like another little yellow guy right in the area that we we'll have been working on previously to get up there. Oh, go away. Since we've got the resources now, watching a different screen running into objects it's always fun there we go so we could literally drive a cart up there now if we wanted to so grab some berries grab these out tough up see this area is actually like more deadly than the one we we're in earlier but literally with the berries in hand it can't kill you well, again, if you don't pay attention. But seriously, if you're paying even the remotest amount of attention to your health level, that's how easy it is to go into those areas without a gas mask. Hmm. I thought that's what would take care of it, but it doesn't. Great thing is, your berries respawn. So, if you're short on them, you can always find more. Let's get back to our factory. So, this is what we need to continue to the next step on unlocking tiers 5 and 6. So, we'll actually get that building now. Since we had it set up already upstairs, we just turned it off so that we could get what we needed to do this current construction project. But now that it's online, we may as well get it uh, working again. Now I think that and that, yep. What we're going to do is... I do want to keep some and also supply that. So, what I'm going to do, I mean, my little drink was uh, whistling, getting because of the gas in it. There we go. So, you into there. You into there. From here to here. From here. In. From here. In. There we go. Now, we've got stuff going in that way, and we've got stuff going in this way. So it's splitting up. So, guaranteed, we'll always have some in our inventory, and some we won't. When we look at this now, it's turning on. So we're making smart plating again. We'll drop that extra group in there. So while we're up here, I think I've got a little... Yeah, there's a workbench. Let's convert our little friends into actual cells. No point keeping them in the way they are. There we go. Good supply of them now. Top out by our rebar.
leaving it the hard drive unlocking. Then we're going to run off and go do the upgrade to our coal fire plant. But what I'm going to do as part of that process, I think, is actually set up a hypertube. So we don't have to walk over there anymore. We'll be able to just take the hypertube over from now on. Because I think we've got that unlocked. Uh, I'm not sure whether that's good later on or even that. So let's just do that. And let's get this other hard drive scanning. Now, do we even have hypertubes unlocked? We've got water. We've got the wall supports going. Have we even unlocked it? No, we have not. Because we would need steel. Damn. Yeah. This comes in handy, though. Like, the inventory slots are good. But the tractor really makes your life better. Yeah, so this is how you unlock the versatile framework. That's a part of the... Um, space elevator unlocks in order to continue progressing to the next tiers 5 and 6, which as you can see are locked up there, and then you get 7 and 8. So you need to do this first in order to unlock advanced steel, which are some of the motors which we were picking up earlier. And that will also unlocks minor mark 2. Then you can use the steel to do the hypertubes and your lovely conveyor lifts. This is why we're keeping that coal resource that's right near us for steel production because you will go through an awful lot of it. I think that should be enough to do some stuff in here now. Uh, need oil unlock to continue some of this stuff. Yeah, definitely need oil unlocked. What's this? I know where we can find the mycelium, so... Yeah. Flower petals were done. Nutrient paste. Yeah, we need steel for that. Power slugs were done. Quartz. I'm not sure how much we have of that. I've oh, got enough to continue that, so... We'll have to process some quartz in order to actually... I know, that's raw. Because then you unlock this with the raw, so... And then you can unlock silica. So you need gunpowder, which is um, just sulfur and uh, coal. So, yeah. We'll get there. I still haven't found a use for Sam Ore, and nobody I know actually knows the use for it, so... We'll drop the motors off in the box since we do not need them. Because, seriously, rough for now. I'm not sure what they can be used for. Drop that off. And we're good. Alright, let's head out to do the upgrade. Our permanent processing facility. Our temporary processing facility. Oh, yeah, making rotors. Yeah, this is going to hurt. Right, so we know that there's a power... We've just followed the power cable out, which will lead to our power production area. This is why we did it. Now, if we had the little, um... Uh, let me... Well, beggars are annoying. Oh, we haven't... Oh, yeah, the zipline machine. This one. 
which needs a Xeno Zapper and some Quickwire, which we just had. <sighs> well, anyway, yeah, let's go do it. It's a lot of fun. That's why I want to show it to you. Just because I can. Need this. What do we need again? Got a memory like a fish, I do. So, Xeno Zappa and 30 quick wire. Yes, I know we're making it, but meh. It's already here, so why not? Like, seriously, my memory is shocking. <laughs> Alright, so, replace our little berries with that. Check our berries in there. Sort it. Now we can add you to it. Get rid of you. Alright, so this is our, hang on, our new toy. So running at speed, jump, and latch on. Then you can jump off and go again. Now you're riding the uh, lovely power network cables. I actually do think it's quicker running, but where this comes in handy, I'll show you very shortly. Right here. It's essentially, well, it's what it's called is a zipline machine, so. Huh. Hey, dumbass. And up the hill. Yeah, it's definitely quicker running. But going over across um, open areas or, you know, not falling to your death, zip lines are great. I had one as a kid. I loved them. Ah, uh, yes. Another lovely stop. Berryfield. Grab a couple, and run. Alright, so here's a good use of it. Just make sure you actually aim well. So that actually saves a little bit of time there. Here we go. Now, as we know from last time, this is our lovely little power selection area. So we weren't supplying quite enough via the belts. So what we need to do is actually head back to the production area. Especially now that we've got the, what we need to actually upgrade the belts as well. Just chuck in these lovely little boys. So now that's up to 120 per minute. So if we check our belts. It says 120 resources per minute. So there's no point putting any more um, upgrades in that because we can't supply it currently. 
So when we get the um, steel production going, then we can. So let's chuck in our little upgrades, turn them up. As you can see, it's like a threefold power increase to in order to do it, because it went from five megawatts to fifteen megawatts. Now I don't think there are any more. Um, nodes in this area for coal, but let's have a look around because this little thing isn't a hundred percent. Because we've got these, what we can do to make our life easy is just run around with this. Because as we saw when we were here earlier, you really couldn't see where it needed to go. So, and it just kind of locked. When it's in the right area, it kind of locks on and it'll stay there. So you know that you can actually put stuff in. So there's no harm in doing it. But we're probably completely wasting our time now. But... It was worth having a quick look around. So we now know that each one of these is producing 120 per minute, which means that these lines here at Mark 1s are supplying enough. So that's why we brought the Mark 2 belt increases, while the supplies to increase them. So we should have enough to upgrade all the way here now. Let's just make sure we actually upgrade them all before we try doing our upgrade. There we go. So yes, we did have enough resources. So as you can see, it's now at nearly full production. Like, it's it'll actually slow down because the belts aren't using it all. So we come down our lovely little belts now that they're upgraded to Mark IIs. So we can double now our coal power plant. So what I'm going to suggest first of all is come back and grab the coal or the spare coal out of the mines so that you've got something to stick in the end um, coal plants because they're the ones that suffer at, uh, at first and they can be a real pain. So here we go. As you can see, it's doing it quicker than what uh, we're actually using it. So we're getting a bit of a stockpile. And something decided that it doesn't like us. So where are you? Oh, this might be the... M yeah, so here's another coal node right here. So we could, with our little upgrades, triple our production. I was sure there was another coal node around here. All right, so that little beggar's gone. Here we go. Our coal upgrade. We'll need power. That's why you carry what you need to set up another one, just in case. Let's have another quick look around. There might be something I'm missing. Now, we don't need that. We need the bacon. I'll take the bacon. Eh. Alright, so that's nothing. So that's would be deadly if we didn't have our lovely little um, supply of berries. Which um, we'll actually use right now. So we're good. I love this sword. Let's go choppy choppy.
Yeah, you take a little bit more damage than you do otherwise, but... Eh. Gotcha. Choppy choppy. Uh, might as well get the nuts. They're nowhere near as good as the berries, but... Eh. If they're here, why not? So, we now know that we can at least have three um, coal-fired power plant lines going now with what we've got. That is roughly 1,800, I think, power. Well, we don't have enough to set up um, all three. We just have enough to set up our second one, but... The, even the second one is going to secure our um, power supply a lot better than what we did have. So, let's grab the second supply of coal. So, that'll certainly help the um, end production. And we'll just do a Mark 1 belt for now. And we're just going to cut these trees down, so... Meh. Have a nice little gap in order to be able to drive our trucks underneath for later on. And let's put a conveyor stacker on there. And take our new input of coal. And put it there. And let's just put the stackers in. Get it set up, ready for later. Nothing wrong with pre-setting stuff up. Alright, so. we There's our lovely water supply. Now, what I'm thinking of doing is just making our life easier and going straight down with the next lot of power. Or, building on top. I'm not sure yet. Because, these water gens only like being, ironically, in the water. But what we will do is we're going to expand our platform this way alright so it's touching that water gen so it's not liking it so let's put in the mark what uh, these guys it's not going to let us go further this way that's a pain in the butt Alright, let's see if we can work around it. We can. Now, we don't have to keep any of that, luckily. So if I literally get rid of this node here, well, we need the software anyway, so we might as well take it. The good thing is, this is still the same big foundation, so it's all connected. There we go. And 
Damn, I knew that wasn't going to work. Oh, long way. Alright. Hmm. I reckon if I... Let's say, well, let's go this way. Makes it easy to get out here. Because what I'm planning is obviously where I'm going to put this one and then room for the next one. Since we know we're going to have at least three. Yeah, I reckon if we go this way... I'm going to leave this room in case we get the faster belts and the upgrades so we can expand this one if we want to. That's what I'm also planning for in my head, is the expansion, once we have the level 3 belts and the uh, level 2 miners. And of course, we now don't have enough iron plate. So the heaps hits just keep on running. Alright, so this is going to be where we're going to have our current power set up for this bunch, so let's get at least a couple of these in. So it's going to have to go that way. There's one. And of course I fall off. Bloody hell. Here we go. And we should be able to put our first water extractor in here, hopefully. Or somewhere close to it. So there we go, we've at least got three in. Because we're going to move our um, coal supply line, because, like, literally it does not need that much now. Like, that's just overkill. What we can do... Let's get rid of this one. And for now, we can always just plug the level 1 in there. So I'd say... Probably there. We'll cut this one back to. Because... We're going to need to bring it over here. means we're going to need this.
Hmm. Alright, so, got our secondary pole in. We can get rid of this one now. You always got to make sure when you're running power to your main base that uh, you don't accidentally just turn it off without uh, checking that you've got a secondary connection first. I've made that mistake a few times and then suddenly you just can't get your power back going again for some bloody reason. And you're like, oh crap, what have I done? Alright, so, production, water extractor, holding control, it kind of automatically sets it. We're going to take it back a little bit, because we need to be able to put the pipes up. Just like that. Um, for now, I'm just going to run it straight in. Now, without the uh, lovely little leg things that I've got equipped for my character, you can't actually just naturally jump on top of the um, pipes like this. So just be aware of that. With, um, usually you have to put a little ladder there so you can get up on them. And you can always slide under the pipes. So be aware of that. So the only thing this thing is missing right now is obviously power connections. And obviously the coal. Oh, let's get them hooked up. And we'll do that connection there. So that should turn this on. Now, I never upgrade these with um, the modules because if you need to, you can always just build more of them. It's completely useless um, spending your time, you know, putting the upgrades in them. It's stupid. People do it. I don't know. It's up to them. I think it's stupid. We all play this game differently, so. Put our first pole there. Next one there. Now, this does need to be a Mark II. We don't have a lot left. But just remember from here. We can do this. Crap baskets. Ah, of course. Well, let's just do a Mark 1 belt first, and then we'll do an upgrade for it. So, there. Put the stackable pole. Take one back. Make sure that it will connect through. Now, personally, I don't care if it's glitching through the um, thing there just a little bit. Because, you know, shit happens. It doesn't break any game mechanics by doing it. And now we know we need to put this sort of pole in. So about here. Let's go up two. And connect through. So now we'll go to our Mark Twos, and we don't have enough. So close. So that's what uh, five more there and twenty-five there. So let's see. Do we have 
enough to build some. Yep, we're just going to manually build what we need. I was hoping we never would have to do this again, but out in the field when you're away from your normal supply lines, unfortunately, you have to. This is why we carry extra stuff with us. So we know we need 25 there. I was told there's a button I can press to... Yeah. Also... Might just make everything of what we've got. So this might take a few minutes, guys. So we know 25 for the conveyor belt. And we want to put a few more generators in if we can. But we're also going to need more if we're going to put more generators in because the belt needs to be extended past where it already is. Let's get up to 50, and we'll work from there, eh? There we go. So, Mark II belt is now all the way through from generation point to here. So let's just double check, looking at the sides of the belts to make sure what is actually type of belt. So you can see the top one there is a Mark 1, Mark 2 does look different, and it goes all the way through. So now we've got the Mark 2 belt su uh, supplied all the way through here. Then we've got water. Yep. So all we need to do now is put a splitter on the line. So you go ahead and kind of line it up, and we're good there. And same thing there, kind of about there. And we need to extend this conveyor line here. So instantly just go pole. And we'll go to about there. Looks good. Mark twos. Now, how much does another power plant cost? 20, and we've got, needs, uh, 7 more. So, instead of running all the way back over there, we'll just chuck this in. Oh. Might be quicker just to go over here. So, we need 7. The only problem is, if I do this, I have to put the extra pump in. But this will be a good experiment to see what happens when you don't have enough water supply going to the actual um, generators. I've never done it. So, let's have a look together. Best way to find out how stuff works is just have a crack at it. As I said, if you stuff something up, you just look at it go, okay, so that's not working, what can I do differently? Do not be afraid to fail in this game. If you do, just learn from your bloody lesson. Seriously. Like, seriously, we just stuffed that up twice. So, eh, it happens. So there we go. So, how's that water looking? 
So what I'd actually want to do is um, figure out where the water pipe would want to go for here, and then I'd want to put my um, pump in here. So to make sure that I've got enough water supply for these. Because that's roughly in the middle, that would be. But for now, let's just chuck the uh, pump in. We have what we need. No, we don't. We need more. Yay. So, we're going to be doing a trip back to base. Alright. So what's good is we've now got coal all the way down here. And as you know, to actually connect it to the actual um, plants itself, you only need to use a Mark 1 belt because the rate of what it uses is not um, that of what a Mark 1 belt can supply. So Mark 1 belt easily supplies enough coal and shares it down the line better um, by doing this. So this one f takes its first chunk. So it's not really even for the balance. Like this one gets first dibs, and then it, it kind of, like, then the next one gets its dibs, and blah, 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 blah. So if we top him up to 100% straight away, you notice that this is now feeding more down the line. So, again, top up this one to 100%, and it's now, again, feeding more down the line. And why not do it again? So now it just takes what it needs as it goes. Now the whole point of what we're doing is we're actually kind of figuring out what this needs at maximum potential to be um, running. If you put something in going, oh cool, this is all I need for now, and then you overtax your power system, you'll just get a blackout. Because it's not won't be getting supplied what it needs to continue working. And the last thing you want to do when you're in the middle of a big project is lose all power. It is a pain in the ass Because instantly you just have to stop that project and go figure out what happened. So we know we need 20 and 10. So we need 30 more um, iron plate. We might as well just go and fill it right up and come back. So let's get out our lovely little toy. And up we go. So I've never done that on a zipline, go up it before. You'd need a powered thing, but yeah, essentially what this is. In reality, I've gone down ziplines. They're a lot of fun. Bloody scary when you're a kid. It's great when you, um, we used to have a um, zipline over our dam, because I uh, grew up in the bush. And what you would do is you would zip line across because we lived in a gully and from one side to the next had your zip line so you'd be able to zip line straight into the water and the only problem is even in the height of summer when it's 40 to 50 degrees here in Australia that water the very top of it yeah that was lovely because the water was um, like dirty water, um, like you know, because all the silt and whatnot from the gully would wash into the dam, and so the water would essentially be a brown. You'd look at it, and it's like, oh, it's almost chocolate like, like light chocolate kind of color. You jump into it, and a foot below the surface, 
was just freezing, like really cold. So yeah, you'd instantly go from being super hot to like this instant cold and your body just goes into shock when it does it. So you, when you first jump in, you're like, holy hell, what have I done? So you really had to watch it, make sure, you know, we had to know how to swim before we were even allowed to do it. So it was interesting times, I will say that. All right, so we should have a good supply. We do. So let's just take the whole friggin' lot. So we have no issues over there again. <laughs> so we've got 507 of it now. So we went from having none to an absolute shit ton. So yeah, when you um used to jump into the water, you had to know what was coming. And if you were ready for it, it was a lot of fun. If not, it was a sudden shock to the system and... uh the old fellas used to shrivel up pretty good, <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's a, probably a bit of TMI. Let's just say it was a lot of fun as a kid, because uh, we didn't have all the lovely little toys that everybody has nowadays. We didn't have, like, we had a really basic old 386 computer which could barely run Commander Kane. And if you don't know what that game is, look it up. It's an oldie but a goldie. Yeah, hey dumbass. And straight up the hill. When we've um, got our steel production going, which as soon as we finish this we're going to work on, um, it will make this a hundred times easier because what you actually have to um, upgrade the belts and the hypertubes is you just set it up to destinations. And you're like, cool, I want to go here. Jump in the hypertube and whoosh, you're there. So it makes life a lot easier. You just have to remember where your high tube tubes go. Alright, so let's jump onto our line. Now all I'm doing to do this is holding left click, I jump at it, and he attaches. Then I jump, and do it again. So there we are. Our extra power is running. So we went from a production of 600 to 825. So this is working, and we're getting enough water for now because it's not cranking off its tits doing it. So, as you can see, this goes on for quite a while. So, we're going to get plenty of uh, production. interesting. Unfortunately, swimming in this sucks because you really can't get moving very well. So try and jump up onto one of these machines as soon as you can or get out of the water. There's nothing in the water that can ever hurt you, so don't worry about it. It's not like you have to worry about a shark or something. So let's get coming down here. So we've got three. Well, four, sorry. And no wonder this one isn't uh, having any issues. It's not hooked up to the power. People watching are probably like, you didn't hook it up, you didn't hook it up. So there we go, we're at 900 now. So the question is now, with the water flow, let's see what happens. There we go, so as you can see there, the water flow is actually tanking a little. Because we're not going to be getting enough from that one generator. So what I want to do is, because I'll have one, I need three, so just looking at that, you got your three, then you got your two, and then you got your three. 
So one at each end, and then a split in the middle. So this one and this one will be split with the generator right there. Which will mean that the overage between them will be supplied between. So we'll have to get rid of that because it doesn't let you um, put in the pipes and that with that in the way. Comes up saying, oh, it's being blocked. When, you know, it's really not. But considering that, you know, we're not in desperate need of that power right now, a uh, temporary loss, oh, you know, boo-hoo. So there's that. Get that going. Get that going. So now it's like that one pump definitely can't supply. Um these three, oh, sorry, these extra two, so we have to get another water pump in. So we roughly go about here. And the good thing is it has enough lift in the pipe to be able to get it up to there. So, use, otherwise you'd have to put in additional um, pumps, which are these guys, which take power. So, what we're going to do is we're actually going to remove this. We're going to put in one of these, so that there. And we'll have the water pipe pump Let's try from up here. There we are. And then we're going to do like that. And then like that. So you're kind of like splitting the water between those, guaranteed. Um, so it needs power. So it'll kick in. And that'll take up any slack in the middle there. for the, And also supply the little bit of extra that's needed for the ones beside it. So well, now we know we need another three generators. Now you can stack these right beside each other. I just put a little gap between them. I don't know why. It's just something I started doing ages back. And I've just kind of continued it. It really doesn't make sense. It would probably be a lot more space efficient to not put the gap. Because eventually like, it would actually equal a full generator that you're missing in gap wise but uh, I think it just looks better because it actually lets you run down in between them quite easily with um, the gap like here if we put one side by side you know you have to kind of jump to get between them and I just reckon that's a pain in the butt that's just me so that's one that's two and this is the last one for this row until we get the upgraded belts and can upgrade the um, extractors. So we're going to put our pump in here for the water. Uh, yeah, that works. So... Then we go logistics. Let's get the pipe in. Connector. Knowing where it can um, it'll line up makes that job a lot easier. I wasn't paying attention earlier when I was doing it, so I was having a bit of trouble. But now, as you can see, our little list on the right-hand side is all gone because the stuff that we planned for has all been used. So, there we are. Conveyor belt. There we are. 
And now the only thing we've got to do is put our splitters in and then run the connections for it. So that can go there. That can go there. Now what I am going to do is I'm going to start supplying the end one first and let it actually get um, some coal into it and kind of work backwards before we actually worry about power. Um, also, this needs power as soon as we can. So let's chuck in a temporary power pole there. Oh, actually, power pole. And yes, I know I haven't hooked up the um, power plants yet. There is a reason for that. I don't want it consuming the coal while I'm um, trying to fill it up. That should be bringing now enough water in between them all. So it's pumping out water. These are filling, not only with water, but with coal. Get that one going. There. And yes, you can still put those when there's a pole there. I wasn't sure about that initially, but you can do it as I've just shown you. I have to remove this. So I'm going to put this in. Lovely. As you can see, right now it's pumping a lot down here, but this one's now full. This one's filling up. Once these are 100%, I will then... What's your problem there? Might not be aligned. Hmm, that's unusual. Sometimes it can be a little dicky for some reason. It doesn't tell you why or anything like that. It just... See, now it's working fine. It's probably... I was either put in the wrong thing or it just wasn't aligned enough. So there we are. My problem is this one here will start straight away just churning out power. And we don't want that yet. We want it to build up the um, coal. So these two are full. Which is perfect. We'll add the extra stuff that we've got on us for there. Wait for it to fill up. We also need to set that one up. As you can see, it's not drawing enough in at times, so... And we're not using all our power, so let's cut that so this can actually have a chance to fill up. So, this line's now full. We'll leave that there, stuff it. It's not hurting anything. And it's ready for the expansion for later on. These are running at 100%. So that one's full, that one's full, and how's this one going? 59. And let's eat our berries. Get our health pretty much back to full.
Just a matter of being patient, really. So, now we've got this set up. We don't have enough uh, rotors on us to do more, I don't think. So, we could do five of them if we wanted. Yep, so we could probably do a one and a three for the new area. So, see, these are shutting down because they've hit max for the pipes. So we know this is the one will be extended that way. That one will be extended that way. Problem is, it's really not condensed enough. I don't think. We could easily put um, lifters in for the water to be lifted up to a higher height for the generators. Or we could do a line of it along the water here. Let's check out how far this would have to go back to work. Okay, so here. Question is, could we squeeze in a pump in between these? No. It's just not wide enough. If we could, we could then like put the power plants on this side and have probably oh, could actually. Let's get rid of that. Since we're not like relying on this power just yet, in a small interruption to something like this is like who cares. So if I turn one Jenny this way, and then spin it around and do that, put our water connection back in. And put the power back on. It might be a nice little way to condense the power a little. So we get rid of this one. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. And that. And that. And put our little Jenny in here. Okay, so it's freaking out for some reason. There we go. Alright, so it's not liking the uh, connection with this, so let's get rid of that. There we go. Put this one in for now, just so we can go back and forth. But actually, if I do it right. I'll do that. There we go. So we've now got our three generators facing this direction on this side. So this is our first one. I should be able to do that. Then this will make it easy and just put a Connection like that straight away. Jump up and stuff it up. <laughs> Good work, Andrew. That was well done. There we go. Boom. 
All right, so we've got our water pipes. So let's put in some foundations. Now we won't be able to put in many power things until we go back and get some more um, rotors, but we can kind of get at least part of it set up. So let's actually connect this into the rock face and make it like the rock face is helping to hold it up. And I'm seriously considering getting the mod that allows me to build a um, lot of these in one go. But I figured I'd show you what this thing is like just in pure vanilla and how much of a pain in the buttocks it can be. So let's get it through here and now this side's being held up by the rock face as well. Alright, so how far would a Jenny go? So we need one space here, and the Jennies are there. One there. Although, like... That would probably be your first one. And, well actually, let's... To see if we can line it up with the um, water extractor. Like that, maybe. There we go. Get our water in. And we're going to put a water connection here. Pretty sure it's... yeah, there we are. Should still be enough room for the um, lifter to be put in, if need be. And power connection to there. Power pole here. Power pole there. There we go. So that gets our water going for that. We'll put our coal connection into there. Put our first one there, get our level 2 belt, since we've got plenty of this for now. Get our level 2 in. That was close, nearly fell down. That would have been a pain. So that looks good. I'm literally just doing this to see um, if the belt can actually do it at this angle or whether it needs to be further back. No, it needs to be further back. So can we use a lifter? No, we can't. All right. That's why we test it before we do the whole lot. So let's take this further back. So, I'd say that we'd probably have to put it in there. There. Make it nice and easy. There we are. And... 
let's not worry about doing the whole splitting it multiple directions. Let's just do that. There we are. Let's get you down here. Let's get you down here. We can fi literally forget about these now. We're going to go connect up this one up here that we moved. We're actually going to put the pipe back in too. So hopefully we kept enough of this. Oh, we did just... That's reconnected. Now, these should all be full now. Yep, the pipes aren't moving. So, that's not producing any smoke. So, it's not being used. Power plant's all online. Now, these should run fairly well now, because they've already got the 100 stack of coal in them. And we had a build up on the line. This was my stake originally, was not letting the um, coal actually build up in the plant before turning it on. That's why we had such issues initially. But we were trying to rush the initial um, power plant. So now, we are production of 1,200, capacity of 1,800, because of the um, bloody biomass burners. So if we could actually get this hooked up, we'd actually increase our um, total. Alright, do we have... Oh, we could probably go get copper if we needed to. But for now, it doesn't really matter. This should work. What we'll do is we'll just add a stackable pole here. One there. And run it from there to here. Here. To here. And this goes away. That goes away. We'll lift up that belt, so we'll leave the poles in. Get rid of that. So we should have a bit of coal left in our inventory now if we wanted to. Yep, 86. And we'll go Mark 2 from here to there. So to this section, it's Mark II all the way through to the actual power plants now. And we know we've upgraded that other one, get, got it ready and everything. So... And since this is barely going to be using any... Get it hooked up. I stuffed that. There we go. Get 
beautiful. Oh, that's horrible. <laughs> so what we'll do is we'll make it easy. We'll get on the belt. Move to a little point where I'm not moving along it. Get the splitter. Do this. Which kicks you off. And mark one it in. Now it's still not perfectly straight, but it's better than what it was. So we'll chuck in the extra coal for now. And we'll put a power pole in here. There we go. Now that's not going to work because obviously it's got no water. So, what we need to do is essentially go get more copper plate. And we can finish that off, but we need to get rotors. So, we need to build six more jennies. So, what we'll do is we'll just add six there, so we know what we need to get there for cable and everything wise. Um, we need to do at least six of these. And we'll put down a hundred of that. So we know kind of what we need to come back with. Just to make sure that we're set up, ready to go. Put another connection there, so, you know, extra power connections. And now what we need to do is finish off the reinforced iron plate belt, so the Mark IIs, all the way back to the actual mine. So we can forget about this section of it. because we'll have extra um, anyway, so back at the base. So that's pretty much done. And then we'll finish off by putting in the Mark II belt all the way through the um, to the end of where we're going to be working, probably. So let's also just chuck in a couple of ramps here to make it look like it's getting hold, held up. Of course, that's stuffed up on me. So yeah, we need a Mark II line all the way down. So go back one. There we are. Mark II belt. Alright, so we'll guesstimate, well, measure in some regards, the um, position for this. So, so one. Say two. We'll say three. Four. Five and say six. So we'll put it, the belt all the way down to the end here. That should be alright. There we go. So we know that we've got enough reinforced iron plate to um, build the rest of it. Heavy. And what we'll end up doing is we'll end up putting a um, power connection from here straight down to the end of that power line over there, or close to it as much as we can. That way we can just take a quick ride down there if we need to. Considering that we'd only expected to do one increase in our power supply, 
and we've actually done a double project, I think we've done fairly well. Well, it's not 100% completed yet, but it'll get there. Hey, hey, dumbass. So, straight over the water. There we are. What we're gonna do is, uh, I think we've already put in the, um, yeah, we already put in the. Oh, if we go upstairs, we should be able to do it. Now that we've got the little, um, extender line thingy, the zip line device, we'll be able to just zip line back and forth between the coal plough area and up here. Should be able to come here and grab some of that. Lovely. We'll chuck in the small group because why take a um, half group when you can just get a full group? And this should be perfect. Do it right. We Very nice. So, what is this? It's a pure note of coal. Wow. So, with no increases or anything, we're instantly at 120, and this is a Mark 1 miner. That's lovely. So, we know we want a good group of coal, so... This will be lifted up and taken across the production floor when we do it, in order to, um go to our coal, our, um, our, um, steel production. I don't think it's going to let me go up on that wire. Oh no, it is. It's going to let me go. Didn't think it would. Just had to actually get onto it, I guess. So, we'll probably bring the coal up here. Well, actually, we'll take it to the lower area so that we can hide the belt work. So, let's skittle dead on, on all down here. Let's realign this. Put in a Mark II. So what this will lead to will actually... Um, for now, obviously, we have to use the Mark IIs to get it up here at the same rate that it's being produced at. But um, we'll actually have 
this making what it needs to turn it into a Mark III, and we can actually then put the um, upgrades in it to make it produce even more coal. So... At least now it's hidden under the base and it won't look shit. So we can take it right through here if need be. We'll just bring it down here. Oh, that was a stupid way to take it. Ah, too far. As you can tell, I don't care if we get the extra coal in my um, inventory right now, because we literally need it anyway. There we are. That'll look good. And we can take it through here and get it up there and whatever we need to do with it. But at least it's um, been brought up now. So let's go up and get some more um, reinforced iron plate. We'll grab some rotors while we oh, once we go back down. Um, we've got the wire. So we've got everything we kind of need to go and finish the project now. Just take all of that. Yeah, whoosh, we're done. Um. So one last trip out there, we'll finish it off. Do we have enough concrete? Yeah, we've got enough of everything, really. Yeah. All right, so one last trip out there. Let's get this done. We'll then have tripled our um, coal power. It'll also allow us um, quite a expansion on our factory now because there'll be 1800 megawatts just on the coal power alone with un you know essentially uninterrupted power without having to worry about the um using the biofuel but as i said the biofuel is good as a backup so it's 600 megawatts of backup power for us in this early stage it's actually quite a lot. You know, like, it's essentially one of these coal power plants that we've been working on worth of power for emergency use. Now there are maps for this to show you where all the um, the wrecks are, so you can go and get all the um, hard drives that are in the game, um, where all the bugs are, um, where the actual locations for all the nodes are, but as I said, we're going to play this as a beginner, we're going to try and figure out everything for ourselves, um, I don't know, I just think it's going to be more fun that way. Because, you know, somebody had to figure this stuff out to actually create the wikis. So, we might as well, you know, try and do it as if we're the ones originally doing it. Alright, so that's now got water. Alright. Let's place the jennies. We know we need six more of them. And we've got everything we need, so... Let's see if our guesstimation from earlier was even remotely right.
So that's three in. Three more to go. And the last one. So we weren't too far off. I think we did well. Alright, so let's put in the connections. So what I'm doing is I'm essentially just looking down on the actual um, bricks, uh, the flooring itself, and kind of using the lines to guesstimate where it needs to be. Because the good thing about the pipes is, like for the water, it makes no difference if it has to turn a little bit. Like, if you really want to be OCD about it, then yeah, you can make sure that it's exactly what it needs to be. But I don't give to hoots about if it's exactly right as long as it just works that's my important thing so let's get rid of this because it's being a pain yep there we are like if you really care that much then you're honestly going to spend so much time trying to make sure that everything's exactly right and oh that annoys me I just don't have time for it plus I don't want to keep just that bored <laughs> alright so I should be able to yep here we go Alright, so they now all have water connected up to them, so these should start filling up those pipes quite nicely. Let's get these in. Alright, up here somewhere is that power cable. Oh, well, not out later. That's not bad, like this one here is just sitting just a little bit into the rock face. Like, if we take the ladder... Wow, it's like literally just kissing the rock face. Huh, <laughs> we fit that in well, we did. Grab that. Ah, I missed it. Ah, crap baskets. Hmm. Okay, so, not doing that. There we go. Solve that issue.
Ah, oh, this is gonna hurt. Yeah, you know, without the um, little wire thingies, that would have killed us. The um, jump legs, we would have died from that. They actually absorbed some impact, so that would have been interesting. Having to run all the way back, that would have pissed me off. I never realized that the actual splitter needs to be loaded up with ore when it's first put in. Yeah. It's an interesting little mechanic. I can't believe I never thought of doing this earlier <laughs> from this angle. The good thing is, as we know, since these aren't powered, um, they'll just start filling up. There we are. Connect that one there for shits and gules. And let's top these up with the extra stuff that we've got. That was the whole point of taking it. To save us a bit of time. But being the fact that these are all level twos, this is going to work really well, I think. So, like, these two are still drawing um, what they need to run for the power systems. But this is just now filling up that lovely 46. Like, you could easily make all these extra belts here, um, Mark IIs, so that, you know, it goes in as quickly as possible. But the thing is, this only takes 45 coal per minute. Sorry, 15 coal per minute. Sorry. Um, so, you know, a 60 belt easily covers that. So, instead of drawing everything from this belt, you know, into the first one, then, you know, do the overflow method, which is what this is, because to do an even flow method, you'd actually have to have six connection. You know, like a you'd have to split it once, and then have that splitter go in in two lines to another two set splitters, and then have those six lines come down here to feed the machines. And that would be the only way to split it evenly, so that every machine runs at the same rate. You could do that, but the overflow method for this works just as well. Also uses a lot less resources. But, yeah, if you do what I'm doing here, you allow the machines to fill up to full. Um, it just makes it a lot easier when you first turn it on. So even at 60, we could easily start these up and we'd have no issues with it. They'd never fill up. You know, you'd pretty much be forever at 60. But it'd work pretty good. So because when you're doing, press N, you go 8 times 15... It's 120, so that's the flow rate of the belts. So, for in comparison, if we go and check out the um, original um, power jennies, you'll see that the last one here probably doesn't have 100 in it. Well, it does, because I think we topped it up. What about this one? This one does. Actually, it may have um, filled up because um, we're not generating, like, we're not drawing the full amount. But if we were drawing the full amount, this would be, like, it would never actually fill up. It would just stay, like, at uh, one, at zero to one. So you would actually get intermittent power sp um, drops here and there from it. Well, it wouldn't be often, but it would happen. 
we go. But I definitely think this design here, having some going to the left, some going to the right, actually works really well. I can't believe I never thought of that before. So, we are learning stuff together, guys. If I was to um, even add one more generator on either side, you would have to um, put more water pumps in. Because these are balanced exactly for these eight. So, any more, and they wouldn't um, generate enough water. Well, the, and the, the pipes wouldn't actually hold enough. So, the only way... I don't know whether you get a Mark II version of these. I have no idea. I don't think you do. The only thing you could do is put a um, speed-up module in them to, you know, increase the um, generation of the water and have the increase in the pipe sizes to um, get it to work properly. But, as I said, why bother when you can just build another one and just have it uh, supply the extra water? So, well, if we really needed to, if, say, um, we had a lot more coal fire power plants going in this area because as we've expanded it and whatnot and we needed more and more water and that type of thing, what you could always do is um, at the height where these water pumps are, build a... Um, oh, here, I'll just kind of show you. S some people just find it easier to picture stuff this way than by talking about it, so... Um, let's just put in a... tower, so I can get up there. So I'm not sure from whether this height works. Yeah, it does. So we're now going over the water generators. Now, as you can see how you can stack the water generators. But um, what you would do is from the water generator below, you would actually have the pipe come up and you would put a pump, one of these, on. So you'd probably, I think this would probably go up about two in its, um, so, here, again, visual aid. So, we've decided that we're going to put the power up on top, and I may actually yet do this. We chuck in our water pump. It's all aligned and everything like that. We've got our lovely air bridge above. You would... Put your pipe in. Floor is too steep. Alright, so I need to get back up there, so we need another tower. Alright, so I think somewhere like there is probably a bit more accurate. Well, it's probably pretty straight there now. So, what we'll do is we'll chuck in a power connection over. So, this is just a demo to show you how it can work. Now, I'm not sure whether we'll get enough water lift from the water to actually pump all the way up to this top section. So, we are getting water lift up here. Its flow rate isn't as good as it could be. So, what we'll put in is a fluid buffer. So, basically the water's got somewhere to go. Actually... So 
So here we go. This is our flow rate. So it goes to show you that the water kind of gets to there and stops, and it's not actually going anywhere. So we're not actually getting any water, really, in this, well, none at all. So it's not enough to actually get all the way up um, to flow through there. So what you do is you chuck in a pump, and you make sure that you rotate it. So you can actually see where the flow thing is kind of going. So we'll chuck it in, say, about there. Then we connect that up. And now when we go up there, since we weren't getting any water in the actual container upstairs, now with that pump, it's filling up. So, and we look at the flow rate here. There we go. It's nearly, it's the 300 um, cubic meters per minute. So, it has fixed our flow rate problem. So if we can do that, we get rid of this. But that's how you do that. That's how we could easily bring water from below to the positions upstairs in order to um, basically have one level where we're using the entire water basin here to generate water while our power production is upstairs. So for now, we've still got enough room with what we're doing, but as we um, unlock the higher level belts and the better miners, we may actually end up moving all our power production to upstairs so that we can take full advantage of all the water that we have downstairs. But for now, this is working a treat. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and they're all online. So now when we look at our power supply, there we go. We are at 1725. Should be 1800. Capacity of 2325. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Am I missing one? Production should be 1800. What's going on? This is curious. So these are all green, they're online and working. So that's working fine. Get rid of this because it's in the friggin' way now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. Power output is 75 megawatts, so 8 times 75 is 600, times 3 is 1800. We're uh, missing a full generator's worth of power somewhere. Has to be at the old one. Yeah, that first one's shut down for some reason. Why have you shut down? You've got no coal. Oh, for some reason, that died. Or was taken away. Must have done that by accident somehow. Probably when I was separating the, um... The conveyor. From over here. Because this can go too. Do we have some coal? Let's chuck that in there to speed that up. The thing is, this shouldn't um, have any issues topping up to 100% um, because we're not drawing the full amount. If, we, As I said earlier, 
if we were drawing the full supply of um, coal, like power from all these generators, this would never fill up to 100%, like to 100 coal. It would basically be at staying at the 0 and 1, going back and forth um, with the power issues. So, but we're not copying that currently. So we're at 1800. We don't need a power thingy for that. So how much more power would we get if we overclocked these, out of curiosity? 187 megawatts. We would need 30.35 coal per minute. Oh, that'd be nice. But we don't have enough to do that. <laughs> but, so here we are. We are generating easily enough power. Um, if I was going to do the elevated level, I'd probably go one higher with my, um, my blocks. So that guaranteed we won't have any issues with the placement of the water pumps. Um... Yeah. But that's definitely something that we can look at doing because then we, you know, later on we'll have um, far more uh, water pumps as needed depending on um, our power generation requirements. Um, and that's just how you can easily, you know, the water, they don't have to be right next to the pumps. You know, like, the, with the, um, what these actually generate, with the little bit of lift, as you can see here, it's easily generating uh, what it needs, because this is using some as well. But, um, yeah. If you really were worried, you could easily do something like... Uh, that. Hook it up. And this would actually cause this to um, almost go into negative pressure because it's literally sucking and pressurizing the pipe as much as it can because of that uh, head lift. So if we wanted to, we could easily get rid of that, get rid of this, get rid of this, chuck in a um, connection here, have the water connect up like that, grab the pump, do that, power the pump, and this is now sucking more water than what the pipe can basically supply and pushing it into here um, extremely quickly. So we might as well do it just this way, you know, we never have any flow issues. Um, which I don't think we're going to have anyway, but um, head lift is 1.5, recommended max head lift is 20 meters. So, because you've got to remember, each time you put in these um, things, it's 4 meters high for the large ones. So, like, um, 20 meters is 5 of those high. So, you go 5 high, that pump will get it, it up to 20 meters. But you would probably, between this one here, um, it's, uh, I'm not sure what the pressure would be from this in order to do it, but it would actually be, um, quite interesting to figure that one out. So, as you can see what we did earlier for the flow rate, it wasn't really great for it, but, yeah. But that's what it looks like when you add the pumps in, so... I'm just going to leave those in now that they're there. Can't be bothered changing it. Let's head back and get our steel production going because that is urgent now. It's the next big unlock we need. We've now got plenty of power for a while. So we don't have to worry about power issues. So with that will allow us to get a um you know 
the actual steel going, which allows us to get um, Mark III belts going, which unlocks a lot of production potential. Um, so we'll actually need to bring some extra iron over, probably use some of the um, normal nodes from over here. We'll pipe that over. We've got plenty of um, normal iron plate as needed, and we've got a good bit of reinforced iron plate for now. Uh, we'll just start with one, max it out with uh, the additions to it, and go from there. So over here, I believe it's somewhere in this area. Uh, iron ore. Uh, it must be over here. Because I, th I thought it was over here. Oh well, I was wrong. That happens a lot. Let's get rid of Jackass. Missed. Got him that time. Yeah, here it is. So we've got some um, limestone here. Pretty sure these are normal nodes. Yeah, a normal node. Let's bring this over. I'll have to get rid of this first. And we'll get rid of this one too. I'm just going to bring these all over in one go because we'll end up needing the um, extra iron. So we might as well do it now. Um, no, I need a workshop because I need to build a extra portable miner. Alright, so let's do that, and that, we're going to need three high, and then we're going to go one, two, three, and the reason why we're doing it so high up is I'm um, allowing for uh, trucks to be able to pace, pass under when we're using trucks to drive around. There's nothing worse than going, oh crap, I can't go under there or I can't go under there because you haven't built it high enough. So now we're planning on the infrastructure being high enough so that we can drive our trucks around as needed. So I may even bring over that um, limestone node while we're here since, you know, might as well. So... Let's make another portable miner. Now, in order to make the Mark IIs, you actually have to make a second portable miner. And um, it doesn't register that you've, um, you know, like the one that's in the miner and the one in your hand as two. It registers it as just the one in your hand. So what you need to do is actually delete the old one and then build the new one. So, which is, you know, that's fairly easy just to pick it up, put it down. Um, but that's just how that works. So, unless you have multiple, multiple um, portable miners in your inventory, that's how you would have to do it. So, let's put in one, two, three... And then first level. Trust me, um, this works because uh, that there is easily enough room for a tractor to get under. So I have measured it multiple times and I know it works. So from the top one, not enough space almost. So one. 
two, three, four. From here to here. From there to there. There we go. So this will give, bring us three lines of iron and a line of limestone. So looking at this, we get our 60 per minute. One, two is our 120 per minute. So one, two. One, two. So that'll max out each um, conveyor line heading over. So we won't have to worry about that now. We know it's exactly right. Uh, this limestone node here is impure. So that gives us a 45. Woohoo. Well, when it's powered. Um, so let's chuck our power line. I'm sorry for the screen going dark. I don't have the mod in, which is the Permaday mod. Um, it does make it for doing YouTubes and that a lot better, being the fact that it's always daylight. But I actually think the nighttime looks really good. It really gives you a reason to um, put in lights everywhere. So, but there we go. Our lovely new um, mines are now online. Take some berries, since we're right here. It's a matter of just convenience. Um, with this supply being that it's only at 45, I'm going to reduce this to a Mark 1 belt. There is no point at being Mark 2 because Mark 2 just it doesn't, it can't handle it. So it's just going to be a waste of resources until later on when I've, we've got pretty much unlimited resources. Um, then you can worry about doing it. So for now, let's grab one of these for doing measuring. And yes, we will just go straight through the um, toxic area, because who cares? Because belts don't suffer damage from the toxic damage, so... So, one, two, three, and four. So... One, two, three, first spot. Second spot. Third, then go to Mark 1 belt. There we are. Take the nuts. Okay, so measurement time. Now you could um, have this go to like a truck station and have like trucks um, take it over if you wanted to. Um, I'm not going to bother with that. Because we're so close, I'm just going to pipe it over. Well, conveyor it over. It's I honestly think it's a waste of trying to use trucks. Um, now trains are a different issue. Um, Later on, when we get the chance to unlock trains and use those, um, there are a lot of resources around the map that will definitely be training over, um, simply because it's... I don't think the game could handle if you had one sort of clearing area where they were all conveyed over. I don't think it'd work. Um, I'm not sure what it'd do to the game. I'm probably sure that the lag would be real. Um, and be really annoying. So we're not even going to attempt that. So later on, when we're trying to bring over um, massive supplies of different resources, we'll just have it um, gather as quickly as it can, and we'll have it convey our, um, train over and unload. And all you do is, like, you set up your own production the way you want it, and you just realise that there might be an interruption between when the train's going to actually supply the material, versus, um, you know, what it would be like having a conveyor line there, which is just a constant supply, depending on the rate at which the conveyor can actually transport it, and the pumps can actually, you know, the extractors can actually extract it out of the ground. 
So one, and we need one more. I mean, we can easily see some more over there, but to get to those is going to be a pain. This was just nice and close and easy. This is going to hurt. Oh, it didn't. Expected it to. So... Let's just make a power shard. Chuck it in here to upgrade it. So there we go. Now it's taken full advantage of what that line can actually do, which is um, the 65. Oh, sorry, 60. Um, later on, if we chuck another one in there, it'll take it over to like 75. Then we would have to put a Mark II belt up there. So... What we will do is we're going to kind of just do one line, rush it in, through the smoke. Four, five, six, seven. I think it's eight we need, but we'll figure that out in a minute. So one, two, three, four. All right, so we're out of uh, Mark II supplies. But we'll just do Mark I's for now, and then we'll come back with a ton of reinforced iron plate, and we'll upgrade it to um, level two until we run out of uh, this material. So there we go. So seven is perfect. So let's... And the good thing is all belts are the same length. You don't have to worry about it being dicky, saying, oh, you know, Mark II belt can go further than a Mark I. They all just go the same length, so it makes it easy for when you do an upgrade. Four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four. Well, we could have just worked on one and brought just one straight over, but we're in the area, we're already doing the work, you might as well do it. So here we go, to here, roughly. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. So one, two, three, there's four. So as you can see, it takes a lot more resources to bring four over than, say, what one would. Like, we would have got one all the way over, and then we could have done, you know, worked out for the others, but... Three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four. All right, so we're out of material. So what we will then do is um, we'll incorporate this belt into it as well. So this will actually go up one higher. Um, from now on, and um, we'll have this linked over. So we'll probably do the same thing with this. It's this way we're starting to elevate the stuff off the ground high enough that we can easily get our um, vehicles through the area. So one, two, three, four, five, six. I'll take the sulfur over here, but then we're just going to take the iron ore upstairs and just dump it in the, um, and the limestone. Well, probably just over here, actually. Oh, 
Might as well chuck them straight in. No use just deleting it. It might as well be put to some sort of use. Alright, so how did we go? What do we get? So, alternate uh, compacted coal, which is sulfur and uh, coal. Okay. What's this? This is caterium and water. So, that's an interesting one. And you've got the iron plate, which is usually steel and them, but that's copper with it. Okay, stitched iron plate. That looks interesting. But see, as you're doing this, this is how you can easily start unlocking extra, um, you know, construction possibilities. So it can actually get quite confusing. Like, you'll put all this stuff in place, and you'll be like, oh, this is awesome, you know, I'm happy with this and whatnot, and then suddenly you're like, ah, oh, I could do this now. Oh, what do I do, you know? <laughs> Let's just drop those off. We're picking up plenty of those as we go. Um, actually, I'll heal our guy up. Now, I think I actually have... Um, no, it's probably in here. Uh, no, okay, so we haven't unlocked um, the breathers yet, or the healing machines. It's... I'll show you what I've been talking about in those regards. Uh, not that. Not that either. Nope. Uh, see this here? The medical inhaler? It actually allows you to do like a full heal. So like, uh, there's other medical inhalers around here as well. So, um... So we'll go to one of the um, caves that's right near us and we'll get the stuff we need for that one, eventually. But uh, we need to go up and get some reinforced iron plate. And in all this time that we've been doing our power system upgrade and everything else, how much have we made? Well, we've nearly hit our total. So we're at 443. And uh, there's four, and then five, and then six. There's seven. <laughs> so, yeah, it's certainly getting there. So the good thing is, like, if you just take this stuff here um, for your upgradings, um, it means that this will keep working because the um, this always has what it needs to keep working, and any extras you've got right here, you know. So, we don't need you guys anymore. And I do love the fact that you look at our power system now, and we've got 1,800 cons uh, megawatts of constant power production. I love that. I reckon that's freaking great. And we're still making more rotors as needed. So, um, and we've got our coal downstairs. So yeah, we need to finish bringing over our iron, and then we're going to figure out, well, do the design for um, where we're going to process our steel. So up here, this is our copper level. I believe this is limestone, and yep, so this is all limestone. So eventually we'll have um, just hyper tubes go up to levels, so we'll probably leave these ramps in, but you'll be able to just say if you want to go up to level 4, you just jump in the hyper tube and whoosh you there, even level 3. Um, level 2, you can just run up it, I think. Um, you also get the uh, ability to... Um, as we do unlocks with tickets, which we'll go check on our tickets, because remember we've still got all that um, Caterium buddy um, and quick wire being made and thrown into the machine. One, two, three, four. And that's one, two, three, so we need one more. Because this level here 
is the um, belt work area. Yep. And grab what we need for this actual level. So this will be good. This will be our steel production level. So the reason why it's getting its own level is you go through a lot of steel. And I mean a lot. Because it makes so many things and it's involved in so many other um, construction projects that you end up just making so much steel. Like, we're so lucky we've got a pure coal node right near us in order to get the steel production going. And any other coal nodes that might be near us um, are going to help fund our steel production here. Um, there are other places where there are a lot more... St um, coal nodes uh, grouped close together and I know one area on the map that has um, I think it's got pure coal nodes and pure iron nodes right next to each other and it's the perfect um, steel production area but um, I usually wait to go over there to get that set up until I've got trains once I've got trains then I worry about um, heading over there and doing that because you um, a, it's easier to get back and forth over there. Even with hyper tubes, it does take a minute to get over there. Um, what we will do is we're going to put a door in. So, put the door in for there. And we'll start making it look like it's actually held up properly, you know? It doesn't look like it's just a floating bubble. <laughs> well, floating platform. Which annoys me. Well, you don't have to. You could literally just have constant floating platforms everywhere if you really want. That's up to you. I think it looks stupid. In most games, you'll actually find there are usually, like, unless, you know, it specifically has um, structural integrity for uh, buildings, which isn't a very um, common thing in um, games nowadays that I've seen. Um, something like um, Medieval Engineers, it has it. Um but I don't really know of many others that actually do have it. It does make the um, construction of things a little bit more complicated, and you have to think a little bit more about how you're going to do it and what it's going to look like and whatnot, and I really enjoy that aspect of it. Um, you just don't find it happens a lot, though. That's the problem. So if you literally had to put structural integrity in this, um, it'd be interesting certainly make uh, a lot of people's builds that I've seen in this completely just fall apart, and like this one would too. Like, it's... Um, large sections of it are just floating. So, right now we're just doing this to cure my um, need to want to make it so it's not floaty, but... Well, even that, this bit right here, it's floaty. So, um, games like Project Zomboid, you can easily get a base made now um, where you're floating in the air and zombies can literally just walk under you and you can just look down at them and laugh and they can't literally do anything to get you. Um, they did add the fact that they could tear down the, um, the ropes and whatnot, um, but they still, you know... You build it high enough, they can't get to you no matter what they do. 
So I actually think that makes the game quite cheaty in the end, but, you know, each to their own. So we'll actually have to route this um, underneath soon. Um, so let's do that now. We'll have it come out here. And go up. It is a Mark II belt lift, so logistics lift Mark II here. Okay, so it needs to actually go to the right a little. And there we are. Sorry, just whacked the uh, mic then. Alright, so now we need to get this piped through, and I don't care that it's glitching through there, you're not going to see it. So, we'll have it come out here, like this. And this is where we'll put the merger. Into there. And merge it in. Get rid of the old one. So there we go, that'll be hidden underneath now. So as you'll see, it'll happily go through the ground, doesn't cause any issues. And once you've actually got like, this sort of thing in, you can't see it, so who cares, you know, like... If it's hidden away, it's doing its job, and yeah, it looks better. Now we've got some leftover um, limestone from doing that work, so what we can do is run over to our disposal system and chuck it in there and get rid of it. Miles will be turned into tickets. So, how many tickets have we got? We've got seven of them so far. We're still producing a constant, say, 2800 and whatever's left over. So between that seven, I think we've got four in the box back at the base, so let's go have a look at that. Yep, so we've now got eleven. Let's come to our shop and see what we can get. I like the railings. I'm not going to use those. Um, we've already got the catwalks. So we've still got six to spend. I don't care much for the um the different look. Uh the windowed walls, I've never really used them. We can't afford them anyway. <clears throat> but this is the thing I was looking at there earlier that's gonna make our life a little bit easier for doing things that are structural integrity and whatnot. Um and I believe it's still oh we've got eleven, don't we? So we've spent six. Um, I love that pillar stuff. That looks great. Makes things look so cool. Um, these look good. So there we go. 11. So 
So new buildings are unlocked. So when we go to foundations now, we've got lovely things like glass foundations, which look awesome. Um, you got your pillars. You've got your inverted blocks. So like, uh, and your ramps here. So for our um, stairwells here, what we can do, uh, here we may just put in the that. Um, we'll get rid of that now. Um, not the double ramps. I don't want the double ramps. I want the inverted ramps. Okay, so it needs its own thing. So there's that. Um, get rid of that one. Um, I have an idea for that, so what I'm going to do is here, we're going to put in that, put a pillar in, and then put a, on this square up here, once we've uh, put the next pillar in, there we are, so it looks like it's literally been held up, actually, I'll get rid of that, do that and we'll put in a full block there so then it kind of lines up with there and then we put in the pillar on the side block so our vertic you know upside downness <laughs> doesn't look so bad so let's get rid of that that and that and put the upside down blocks in Now, you could um, easily just replace these two here, like that, with the, um, the the double stack four, like that. So it's one block. So we may do that because I think that'll like reduce the block count in the area. And I think it actually costs less than... Yeah, so that's five, and that's five. So, yeah, that's actually... Yeah, it's actually saving us um, concrete. Not that we don't have, you know, a problem with concrete supply anymore. You know, we've got tons of it. go and we'll put in the uh, full block up here now uh, so if, yep and then we chuck in the pillar and then we go pillar blocks all the way down which I really think adds a good look to the um, base you know so it's not just floating there it's actually structurally intact now so, you know, that's got its little bit, that's got its little bit. So let's take this out. Chuck in our double block. There we are. Perfect. And our four block at the end there. Then the upside down pillar top. And I this stuff's all meant to be temporary anyway, so that'll end up getting replaced. Um But yeah, that looks a lot better, I think. Alright, so what we do need to do is put in our walkway. So we'll end up, we'll do the little thing around that later on, but we've got to put that one in there yet, so I'm not going to rush into that.
Die cut power pole. So this level will have power. Let's get some walls in. Now the window blocks do allow for a good view on certain things through this, but if you really want to worry about views and things like that, you can always just take that out and, um... Oh, how do you do the glass ones? I don't think you can. I think it's just a foundation block. But, uh, yeah, if you really want to, um... There you go, that's a lovely view down there, so uh, I don't know about you, but that makes my butt pucker. So, even though, like, there's no chance of you falling, but, uh... Yeah, like, glass elevators and that, you can stick those. I don't do well with heights. So, put our little door in. This way, once we get the little cart that we can drive around, we can get into anywhere we want to go. But what I do love, um, this section here, if we take away this, let's actually go onto that level. Oh, shivers. We got lucky then. <laughs> Not about my swearing, but, uh, the fact that we could have fallen to our um, death. Um, we do this, do this, and then what we can do, this is what I was looking forward to for these um, conveyor uh, wall pieces. Is, there we are. It's now got just a small hole for it to pop through. It looks so much better than the big open holes that we had there before. So now we can just seal this up. Or actually, what we might do is we might leave the um, doors in for going to those levels like we've got for now. So, but that just looks so much better, I reckon, having those little bits. So eventually we'll end up doing that for this whole lot. Um, this needs to be redone and moved over a block. Um, yeah. So we're working on our steel. So let's go get some more of this. Um, I don't really care if I pinch this for now. We kind of need the extra. Um, because I'm curious how well this has gone. We should nearly be at the end of this. 17 more. Like there's one there. So that's uh, 15, 14, 13, 13, and here comes number 12. So 12 left. So at its rate, in 6 minutes, we will have completely finished what we need um, to... for the smart plating. I do not believe we need these at all once um, it's finished. There's no need for it because it's not involved in the next unlocks. I don't know what it's used for after that, whether it's used for at all. I think it's only for the space elevator. Um, when I've seen um, the next level once, because I have finished this level once before, um, once you finish it, you don't need the smart plating in order to do the next bit, I believe. Um, with that knowledge in place, I would essentially just pack this section up because we can reuse it to do whatever. Uh, but for now, let's run over and continue bringing over our th uh, four lines of resources, which, as I said, these will um, be inv um, added to it. So this will condense come over here to this point and we'll leave it here in the end and this can continue routing where it is and we'll have um, this line go over to directly that connection there um, but we'll essentially be able to drive our trucks under here from now on with no issues so let's just get back to it. Uh, we'll use the Mark 1s for now and then we'll do the Mark 2 upgrades in a minute. Um, 
this is just going to be quicker, I think, for now. So, let's... Chuck. Let's measure this out. So, roughly to here. Alright, let's chuck in our poles. So, as we know, first three are clearance. Well, four. So, one, two, three, four, and five, which is going to include this new line. So, this new line can zip here. One, two, three, four. So actually, we should probably do it back here. So, yeah, let's change this. So, let's move this one. One, two, three, four. And route this one above it. So we'll have absolutely no issue driving our tractors under these areas now. So, because when one of my original bases, I had um, the conveyor lines in such annoying places that you were like, oh, I can only just get my tractor through this section or that section. And like, if the tractor gets stuck, it ends up flicking and like, can actually be like pole vaulted halfway across the freaking map or something. Like it does all kinds of wacky shit. So you really got to be aware and careful of that one. So if you don't want the extra issues, um, do something like this. So mind you, it looks pretty cool. Like there's nothing wrong with making these things vertical, you know. And you can always stack um, poles up beside it. Um, you don't have to worry about putting bloody foundations absolutely everywhere to do this because, like, yeah, without the foundations, this still looks awesome, I think. So we'll get rid of this. So we'll grab this first one. We know we're heading this way, so. And that's as far as we can go, so change the poles over, go a little bit back. One, two, three, that's the first one. One, two, three, four, and we've got five, and now a sixth one, because we're going to feed this one onto it. So the top one here goes to the, well actually what we'll do is we'll make this easy. Bottom one, uh, actually let's try something a little different. Okay, let's go uh, lift, something like that, so one, two, three, and there's four, so that looks good, and there we are. So as you can see, like literally with the um these lifts, and considering they run at the same rate as the belts, why not use them? And you know, that's already given us a bit of extra room to drive vehicles under if we need to. Um now we know these are all Mark One belts going through here, so we're not um killing any sort of production by just putting in the temporary Mark Ones. We'll get rid of that one there because that's where we'll hook up these guys to. Get rid of this. And this, um, get rid of that for now, and let's measure this out, so to, uh, let's go to here I'd say, so one, two, three, and there's the first one, one, two, three, four, five, and then six, So one, two, three, and there's four. Our new lines. So you can incorporate old ones like we've just done, which makes it look really good. Because you've cleaned them up. And then you've got the old um, new lines coming in as well. 
So what we'll do here is we'll put a lifter in. So with it already in place, we can easily do that. So this one can go straight there. This one here can feed straight over here, just like it was doing there before. So that's been restored. Like literally, if we wanted to, we could just you know fix it up and have it go straight over there on level. But it's already in place. Why piss fight around with it too much right now? These are in place for where we want to route them for later on. Um, obviously, this is going to have to go up to the limestone level. This is going to feed up to our new um, steel smelting area. So we want to upgrade at least those middle three belts there to level twos because of um, the fact that the flow rate is um, level two production from the miners. So we want to make sure that we're actually making full use of that. But the great thing is, um, with the Mark 1s in place like this, you just run along with your Mark 2s and whoosh you um, upgrade it. No issues. And the good thing is you can do it from range. So we don't have to enter our little gas area here since we've just gone straight through it. And we've already run out of Mark 2s, so they're all 27s there so it's only two of them there that we actually missed out on so we nearly had exactly what we needed to get it right through so we need to come back with at least 54 more reinforced iron plate to finish that off so let's go get some more iron plate and the clearance looks great I reckon like lifts it right off the ground it's all stacked in one line. Like, when you're trying to bring multiple belts over to your main factory, if you're having them just go higgledy-piggledy all over the place, it looks shit. Sorry, just having a quick drink. I don't yip-yap so much, so... It's only when I'm streaming I find that I get dry really quickly. So, this is, you know, as you can see, this looks crap with the belts the way they are right now. You know, and they're all over the freaking place. Like these ones under here, as you can see how we've done, are all hidden away and they look great. All hidden away. So we'll end up getting, as I said, this one here moved over here and hooked up and ready to go. Um, that'll end up going into a, um, for the wall, we'll end up putting one of the level threes in so that it can slot into the third slot along. And we'll have um, this one here on a middle slot. Um, but yeah, it'll just, it'll look a lot better once it's over here, so out of the way. So you've got your lifters over here, this is that, um, limestone one we just finished there before, lifting up through, which, you know, as I said, those things can lift up to 13 blocks of vertical, so they can look really good. These are our, um, just backups, so how much, uh, oh, we've got plenty, so let's actually top these up and make sure that they're working. Let's drop off the iron and the limestone that we don't need, and that can just be flushed in the system and help us generate more tickets. Because, uh, why not? So, these aren't actually using anything, but since they um, weren't topped up um, initially completely, so we won't have any issues in the future. So... That's got 200, 200. I just love the fact that we're using coal now instead of these things because with our amount of um, power that we're drawing, so we're using right now 600 megawatts, so we would have had to build more of these and we'd be forever just out bloody using the chainsaw, cutting down trees, trying to get enough biofuel up to uh, keep us supplied. But... um. Yeah, that works well now, so let's drop off what we don't need from the biofuel, and we'll split a small pile for chainsaw fuel, sort it, sort it, so we're running out of materials, but, you know, we've been doing a lot of building, so come over to our building process area, up to our factory floor that's staying here, looks really good, you know, stuff it's brought up, hardly any belts moving around. Don't this little section that I added for this temporary production. 
Um, oh, there we go. Exactly 54 what we needed to do those two upgrades. So this is working fine. So we'll take the two out there. Um, so that'll feed in in time. So look, we'll follow this one down once it's produced. There we go, just coming out. There she goes. Don't know why this is here. Ah, oh, it's because one I had two going, so we can get rid of that now. So. Oh, hang on. Looks like we've got, um, we're full. We are, 500 of them made. Nice. All right, let's deconstruct this. Um, we won't deconstruct this from down here. We will r r take this up here to make life easier and then deconstruct it from up here because otherwise we would have to run all the way around. So this can go. So can this. And our um, split up uh, supply line here can uh, be taken away and we can just keep the stuff on us now. So that can go. So this will look good now. As I said, this was all temporary just while we're making the bits and pieces. Bits and all bits and bobs. Um, So there we go. That's that section of um, parts for the space elevator made. And as I said, I'm pretty sure we don't need to worry about building any more of the smart plating ever because it's not used in the next sections from what I know of. Um, and yeah, I think that's it for smart plating. So we have to work now on the versatile framework and the automated wiring. Um, so these smart plating, these spare ones, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to throw them in here. Let's just send them away. They should help make some uh, good points, I hope. We'll uh, get a little spike there later on. That's a great way of scrapping. So we're generating tons of points by just sending Caterium to the, um, well, actually, um, quick wire. That's being made and being sent away. Um, yeah, so we've got our coal. We know where that is. Let's get the coal brought up to the um, iron deck. So uh, it's actually down here, sorry. So we've got to figure out where we're going to take it up. We might take it up on this side of the building. So we might bring it over here and run it up on the outside here for a good look, I reckon. Because um, there it is. So... Oh, that was lucky. That was stupid, but that was lucky. <laughs> Oh, so uh, while I've got the chance, let's save it so we don't do that again, eh? Because <laughs> uh, that would have been a death fall, that's for sure. And I wouldn't have got any of our stuff back. <laughs> um, so yeah, let's not do that again. Uh, that was definitely butt puckering, that's for sure. So this time we get rid of that. <laughs> so we're going to see where we need to bring it to, which is here. Perfect. Our hidden away belt area, so doesn't look um shit. <laughs> we can get rid of this. Nothing wrong with having extra coal, because uh you just chuck it in the machines to start it up or whatnot. Um, and we'll rotate this 
So let's move this for now. And grab our Mark IIs. Rotate it, and there we are. Perfect. Bring it over here. And we'll actually, because we want to run um, it vertically straight up, what we'll do is we'll chuck this in here. Needs to be turned that way. And we'll just do that for now. We can always adjust it later. That's fed in perfectly. So that's that done. Let's get our uh, close up the floors. So we can easily get through here without uh, falling easily. So there we go, that's already started to lift up. Let's head up to our steel deck and figure out how we're going to do it. Um, I might chuck the walls in so that we can figure out how it's going to work. Ah, uh, crap baskets. Get rid of that. Alright. Uh, put our lifts back in. And this will literally allow us to finish off our um, steel production area so that we can actually go ahead and work on our hypertube so we don't have to run up and down here anymore. We may have actually gotten this at the perfect height for it. Oh, almost. Damn. So, in order to allow us to um, bring it up now, what we'll do is we'll put in a um, belt wall like this, we'll have to move that, but what you can do is you can do another one here, and if we're going to go up higher, which we will, uh, actually no, the, actually that's at the perfect level, wow that actually worked out perfectly because we're going to, this is our um, belt working deck so down here so that actually worked out perfectly did not think that had happened so all our belts go down here so they're hidden away except for on the outside which is for effect that's gonna work out great actually so what we'll do is we will go logistics click on the belt click on the outside like that uh, no, we have to go do it the other way. Crap, boss. Uh, no, okay. If we do... that, now it'll work the way we want it. Yeah, so input's there. So you can start that and just walk, run down. Because um, it doesn't have a casting range. You can walk to the other side of the friggin' map if you wanted to do it. Don't know why you would, but you can. As far as I know of, anyway. So what we do is we come down here, and that's pretty much its maximum stretch to there. So we've done well. Like that. Remove this. I didn't realize that that off-center thing would actually work, but there we go. Now it's perfectly aligned. And this will go all the way up our structure to our steel deck. And it'll look cool. Give some effect to the outside of the building instead of it just being a big square. We've got these lifts going up and down. So mark twoing it all the way up. So that's taking care of our coal up to the deck. Now we have to get our iron over. So what I might do since we've got the room here um, if I take away this, and take away that for now. 
Oh, that's what we could do. Hang on. Just chuck in one of these. Yeah, that works fine. And just chuck in our lovely little. Thing like that. Stop you falling down there easily. Uh, you can blame bloody. Australia's OHS system for me doing this because uh, once you kind of start doing it and you're um, used to doing it, you uh, put in barriers and shit all the time just because that's what you're used to doing. But uh, so that'll be one, two. Even if I just do one there, if I put the same wolf thing in up here. Yeah, if I do a double, it'll actually be spaced out and it'll look good, I think. We'll have to redo the thing up there, but... Alright, so we'll put the double in. There, like that. Wallpiece. I don't know where that other piece went, but oh well. Yeah, that'll actually look really good, I reckon. So we get rid of this. Again. <laughs> so yeah, that can drop down four lines. So the three iron and the coal. Um, pure node, three normals. Because you go through more iron than you do coal when you're doing the steel, I believe. Um, so that takes care of that. So we have to get the iron to come straight down and then head over left. So this being the supply deck underneath here. Bring crap. I don't want to do that. Bring this over. Sound like I had a power issue then, hang on. I was gonna say, I can't have a bloody power issue with me 1800 megawatts from the bloody coal power plants going. The good thing is now, those can go straight up onto the um, conveyor deck. Get rid of that. Because we'll put in that, it'll look good. If I take this across. So, as you can see, conveyors have absolutely no issue basically going straight through each other. So, it doesn't cause any issues whatsoever. The reason why I don't care about it doing this is it's hidden away. We don't see this. So, this is literally just so that. Um, all their conveyors are in the one area doing supplies and whatnot. Um, because in this sort of situation, I don't want to see this. And I can't be asked trying to do, you know, making it look good when it's just coming over here to supply the materials. So we get rid of it. Um, what we will do is we'll actually put a wall piece in here for these um, conveyors. And we'll actually do a large thing of um, supplies. Because this will end up getting taken in here as well. Because uh, its lift is down here. I believe. Uh, yeah, here it is. So, this can actually go now. Um, I'll get rid of this, this, and this. Just chuck that in. Actually... Take that out, get rid of that. There we go, beautiful. Uh, what is it? It's a Mark 1, cool. So, logistics, a lift, grab it. And of course, it's going to be a pain in the arse. Uh, 
health on her she goes the right freaking way too. Not that. Get rid of that. Yeah, there we are. Get rid of you. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. Crap baskets. Okay, hang on. Here we go. Uh, oh, actually. We know where it needs to line up, so that's fine. So it needs to line up with that middle one there. Do that, and we'll go upstairs. There we are. Perfect. And I thought that was going to be difficult. <laughs> so, what we can do again now is we put it back in our... Um, uh, it's an organization. Don't ask me why it's there. Everything it should be under like foundations. Um, there we are. And where was that belt supply from earlier that we cut off here? What level is it? It's Mark 1. Ah, uh, no, that's not it. It's, uh,. Where was it connected to? You were connected to something, I know that. Ah, here it is. I gotta admit, this is the only issue about having all the lines like this, like, we can get a bit higgledy piggledy. But, uh, there we go. So. Yep. This is exactly what I mean by you don't have to um, worry about them crossing the lines or anything like that. There we are. So, all we need to do now is we get rid of that, and this one now connects it there. So we've now gotten rid of this, this, and this entire section here. So whoosh, that looks better already. So into our lovely little underground sorting area. And we can have all our inputs for the multiple levels and whatnot just come in on the uh, belt level here. So we've got tons of um, inputs. And the belts can be all hidden away. So it really makes your life easier, I think. I've tried so many different ways of trying to make um, belt deliveries look good when you're bringing them into your factories, especially like when certain factories need certain belts or this, that, or the other. And it just ends up honestly looking shit. So no matter how I've done it, I haven't found a way to do it good. This, so far, has been the best way that I've been able to find. Um, so what we can do now is we'll end up moving that one as well eventually. But, um, let's just get rid of one of these so we can easily get down here. We've got three uh, belts there. Let's just bring them straight in this group of three here, I reckon. So we know it needs to be Mark two. So, there we are.
as I said, belts have no issue going right near each other and crossing over. So there we are, we've got our lovely three belts um, designed up. Um, reason why I decided to put them there, because I want to bring this new um, limestone node into here. So, because I figured it might as well run along its little brethren here. To there. So, there we go. You know, you got your lovely couple of limestone nodes coming in. And we have these three um, new iron ore mine lines come in and go straight down here to there. And like you can even stack them pretty much like right next to each other if you want to like get them even closer so they're actually crossing over each other and whatnot but you know if you've got the room which we do we might as well make it look somewhat good so like yeah this little bit here is a bit of a pain because you have to run around it but um this deck if we want to we could actually make it bigger and drop it down further um that's the advantage of it um, but for now, we don't need to. Okay, so we weren't having issues there. We literally ran out of um, Mark II supplies. So if we grab Mark Ones for now, we can come back down here and upgrade them to Mark Twos later on. So we know we need to run it all the way over here with the other ones. So if we keep it going directly straight, which I think is that line there... No, it's there. So for now, we're there, up to here. Crap, I hate when I do that. Yes, unfortunately, in this you will hear me say crap a lot, because I do stuff things up a lot. But uh, that's the uh, life of this game. The great thing is, if you make a mistake, it's easy to fix because it doesn't cost you any resources to fix it up. If it cost you resources to fix up your stuff ups, you'd probably take your time a little bit more. But you get 100% of your resources back if you make a mistake, which I really love. Most games are doing that now where they don't make you pay a cost for when you stuff something up, especially when you're learning, because you will stuff a lot of shit up in this game, believe me. I have made some whopping stuff ups in it. And. I think I accident yeah, accidentally um, downgraded one of those belts. Huh, <laughs> whoops. Yep, I accidentally downgraded that middle belt. So, uh, there we go, that's fixed. <laughs> As I said, stuff ups. So it'll look good having that other one come up here. Um, or wherever it actually needs to go into, which will probably be further down for um, the processing area. But the fact that it is it's lined up down there, it looks good. Well, I think so anyway. So there we go. We've got some more materials. What we actually need to do is go finish off upgrading those earlier section where we need the 54. So let's do that first before we worry about putting any more Mark II's in at the actual base itself. Grab the berries on the way since we're literally going past it. There it is. One, two, 
Now let's just double check. We should be... You can tell the difference. That's your Mark 1 belt up top. There, your Mark 2 is below. There is a little subtle difference. Um, as you go higher up in the belt numbers, um, the little increased square size there goes from 1 to 2 of them on the same thing. Then you get to the 3. But you can easily tell like a Mark 1 from like a Mark 4 belt. So I'm not even sure what a Mark 5 one looks like. I've never actually seen it in-game myself because we haven't gotten that uh, for myself yet. So... These are all upgraded. Yes, ready to go. Yes. And let's just double check that we did do this one. This one should be 45 per minute, I think. Or is it 60? It is 60. Okay, good. What we're doing with the steel will actually allow us to unlock Mark III belts and Mark II miners. And then you actually use the steel um, to actually upgrade the belts. And it's actually easier to make than the reinforced iron plate. And you end up, you know, we've got a lot of Mark II belts around the area. We'll end up with a ton of Mark II belts back because of doing the upgrade. So it'll actually, you know, be good because all of a sudden we'll have all this reinforced iron plate available to do construction with. So you actually end up at the point where, you know, you don't really have much to do with the um, reinforced iron um, plate, so there's our little underground area. So now that we know that we've got Mark II's all the way to here, and this is all Mark II all the way here, since we're actually producing 120 at each mine, this will certainly allow us to get some good steel production going. So we can actually probably upgrade this one here, yep. All right, get this one to here. There we go. Perfect. Now we have to bring it down here, and then um, here's the coal. This one is essential that we get it um, over first. So we actually have to go upstairs to um, fix up the elevator for it because we um we're fixing it up so it looks better so this is where the underground area is for this level um since we haven't started any work up here we've only got some real basic stuff up here done so but each level of my um factory has its own underground belt area so that's uh the production floors you know we drop the belts um, down onto the belt floor and it doesn't look as bad I honestly think um, so we need to put we don't have to use the Mark II for this section but we're going to alright and we'll do the same thing here it's just that when we decide to um, put the elevator in it'll actually make it so it automatically defaults to inputting here and we get the inputs downstairs instead of it um, the output being downstairs and the input being up here when you're trying to do the lifts because the game can be really annoying. Now the um, mouse wheel allows you to change direction where the lift is going to, you know, the head of the lift, this thing here that we're looking at, which way it's going to face, but it doesn't change whether it's going to go up or down. So that's why you have to do that little belt shenanigans up there we just did. So we should have a little bit more reinforced iron plate. So let's just grab that while we're doing it. We'll probably end up putting Mark 1 belts in and then upgrading them as we need. So let's drop down here. And yes, you can slide between the belts. Well, so I slide under the belts, I should say. So I'd forgotten I could do that. So we that's fun. <laughs> so let's go under here. Move on over here. So here we go. We've got our lovely three belts that we're working on. And we know we have to bring them all the way over here. So we'll come down here. This is our underground area. So let's put in the lifts. We'll start with the Mark II for the coal. It must be a Mark II. 
we're going to need as much coal as we can get. Um, so let's get the Mark II fed over, and then we'll do the Mark Ones because we just run out of Mark II supplies until we um, can make some more automatically. So let's do the Mark One lifts, and these are easy upgrades. So as you can see, the input is down here because of what we did upstairs. If there is a way to make it so that you can change which way the belt's going to go um, when you're placing them in with these lifts, I'd love somebody to tell me. As far as I know, the only way to do it is the way I've just done it. So let's get a Mark 1. Should, yep, it could reach all the way down here. And that's pretty good. As I said, these will have to be upgraded to Mark II's, but we'll get there. So we've got our Mark I here. So yeah, if you're wondering how I just did that, what you do is you use the mouse wheel and it scrolls, and it allows you to change um, the direction it's going to pump out, so you can get lovely little um, turns for the belt. And I think I just accidentally downgraded that belt, I did. That happens a lot. So there we go. Let's make sure it's aligned. Lovely. And stuff that up. There we go. And there we are. And there we are. So yeah, those these later sections unfortunately are um, only Mark 1s, but we will get enough to upgrade it as we go. And we can um, now have three normal nodes of iron ore pumping in. Um, Organisation, let's put in... some actual floors here, so we can work around without worrying about carking it. So, in your law, this little pillar here thing is actually helping to hold up our um, facility. So it's my game, I can make up whatever rules I want. <laughs> There we go. So we've got our lovely three things of uh, all, all um, oh, the game's just been stupid. Lifting up now, so they're all feeding up. Here it comes. And there we go. So we're all lifting up to the smelting deck. Now the um, actual smelters, well they're actually called foundries, for the steel are uh, not your usual smelters that you use for everything else. They're actually a little different. So I'm th not sure what they cost. Hang on, production. Uh, well, we can't do it until we've actually unlocked your uh, basic steel production, <laughs> which I suddenly realized that we haven't actually done that yet. So we've pretty much got all the stuff we need for it, I'm pretty sure. Uh, I'm going to take some extra of that. I don't need you anymore, so I can drop that off. Um, no logistics, my bad. You, zero. Hey. Thank you. Get rid of that. Uh, how much steel uh, concrete do I have? Oh, I need to go get more. And we'll actually we've got rotors downstairs. I don't think we have any of the um cube things being made yet, so we'll have to have a look at that. Where are that? 
We're good. We may have to make the um, boxes ourselves, the frames. This is all temporary, the stuff here. This is just to help me make extra um, rotors as I needed. Uh, I may actually take all this down soon. Mm, A lovely wife made me a cup of tea. So, as you can see, this is our main smelting area for iron ore coming in. So it's all getting done lovely. As we incre and each um, node that we have come in has its own belt, so this area will actually expand quite um, large as we go. So we'll just continue adding this level, and it keeps going this way. So. The great thing is, um, the actual base area can be as long um, in this section as we want, so all the nodes coming in won't affect anything. So, that's what I love about having a vertical base like this is you don't have to worry about suddenly running out of room. And if you really want, like, if you figure out the maths for having the highest level amount of belt on a Mark 1 node, um, you can probably figure out exactly how many smelters, um, even with the best belt, um, you could have in a single row. Because the only thing limiting is um, for the Mark 1s here, um, well, sorry, this, like, row here, because this is... Um, being used at full speed um, is the belts and obviously the type of miner that I've got. So with the miner on the node with the maximum amount of um, speed ups and the type of miner when you have like, I think it's a Mark 3 miner is the best, you have a Mark 3 miner and then you have a um, the fastest belts you can have on the, with it fully upgraded, that limits on, you know, what you'll actually produce out of that node. That's why I keep saying to in the stream that you make sure that you use your little um, speed up modules only on nodes. So, because, as I said, you can always build more factory machines. Nodes are a limited resource. So let's drop off the stuff we don't need. I'm going to keep the coal for now because that is actually going to be used in doing some gunpowder work there in a minute. Um, so... Grab some more Mark II stuff. Well, I need this in order to make the um, frames. So, if I go here... I thought I had some of these getting made downstairs. I wonder. Before I get too excited doing that, let's have a gander. So this is all screws, screws... Screws. On. Okay. So not in that section. Up here. Iron plates. This should be... Yeah, that's rotors. So I'm actually going to get rid of this section here. Take all these rotors out. Yeah, get rid of this. 
yeah, we'll start getting little boxes there when we can't hold any more in the inventory, but eh. Should be right. This was always going to be temporary, and I just needed the extra rotors while I was trying to get the um, power production going. But now that we don't need to um, use the rotors for doing the um, the space elevator stuff, uh, it's fine. Actually, that we need to keep. It's only this section here that needs to um, disappear. We can come back and pick all this up later. So this is permanent because it's actually part of the facility. And so we can fix all that up later. So yeah, no, we don't actually have any way to... Um, well, anything producing the reinforced iron plate, then turning it into the um, cubes, which we will need to eventually set that up. But we were making plenty of um, iron rods, but it looks what like. What I might do is just go drop off all those um, rotors that I picked up into the box. Good thing is, like each time you do these modular frames, the you get two for the price of one. But let's chuck that in there, eh? It's already opened up a spot. So once we do this, we can go down, drop off everything we need to unlock basic steel production, and then we can go ahead and start putting the foundries in up on the smelting level, and uh, start working on getting some steel going. Once it starts working, we can use that to do the uh, Mark III belts. And Mark III is going to open up a lot of options. So two more. Last one. There we go. Alright, so over to the launcher. Yoink, 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 and yoink, and yoink. What's this? Rotors. Yep. Oh, that was a cool animation. I've never seen that before. Steel production unlocked. Foundry grants access to new simple steel parts. An additional project part can now be constructed. Progress to the next phase is now possible. All right. So that's a huge leap for us because steel unlocks so much potential. Um, it's worth doing these. I love doing the uh, vehicle stuff because I've been yip-yapping about tractors for ages here and we haven't actually got any. So let's get some more modular frames made. Um, we could probably start a production line of this. I think we actually need this for the foundry anyway, so hang on. So, here it is. This is the normal smelter you use for your basic iron ingots, copper ingots, and also your um, caterium. This here is um, your iron, well, steel uh, foundry. So, it has two inputs, one for steel, uh, one for iron, and one for coal. So here we are. You need 45 coal, 45 iron. So it's actually a one for one. Um, one for the recipe. And this then outputs steel ingots. You then take the steel ingots and then you process them into... Um, I haven't unlocked Mark Three stuff, have I? No. Into... It's kind of like a... I guess like the iron plate, but the, the steel version of it. And that allows you to upgrade the belts to Mark III's once you've actually unlocked Mark III upgrades. 
in advanced steel production. So here we are, we've got our lovely supply of materials. Um, the pure node's going to be upgraded as soon as we can to allow for more production for the coal. But we've got plenty of iron come up because, you know, they're only normal nodes. But let's get steel making as soon as possible. So I just want to put this in. So we always leave this one spare and this one spare. Our input lines are going to be here and here. So we get our splitter. First one goes there. And then your second one goes there. And then you put your foundry in um, a little bit further over here. So foundry. And you kind of line it up with the um, these guys. See how like that's already aligned? So we move it over. And we use mark... Well, you can actually have mark 1 belts going in because it's only 45 per minute. So there's mark 1s straight in. I bet you didn't think that would work straight away. But I've done this before. So there we are. That's that. So we start it with steel. you got to always remember that when you put these in to select what it's going to do. But since it's a foundry, I don't know whether it does anything else but steel smelting. But eh. I could be wrong. Probably am. We'll find out later on. And since we've decided that the walls are going to be um, on the inside, the little um, marks on it, on the inside, so the outside, let's not stuff it up now because everything we've been building has been this way around. And... Uh, I don't want to suddenly have to go, oh, this one's around the wrong way, or this random one over here is wrong, or something like that. So with some of the unlocks we've done with the tickets, you're able to get these little things, the double wall guys. So you chuck that in, so it has a little extension go out that side, and this side. So now you can have your power go in like that. So for shits and giggles, we're going to chuck another one in there and have it connect there just because we can you know why not and of course I've put it in the wrong spot so there we are why not the great thing is now with certain unlocks you can actually run your power along the wall and this looks so much better than random power poles hanging around just because they're there I honestly think it looks really good. So, just makes the place look a little bit more organized, especially once you've got the walls in for effect. So, then you can have this come across and connect straight on there. And that's now got power connected all the way from, you know, where those coal power plants are. That's where my power's coming from. So, we have our lovely input lines. Now, we're lucky, because we know that's where the coal is, there. And we're going to have the lift bring it up. So I mark two lift here, just like that. Actually, we'll get rid of this section here and here. Mark two here. Just like that. We don't have enough to do that. It needs 23. So close. There we go. At least that's Mark 1 there going for now. Then we get this one. Take this out. For now, like a Mark 1 is exactly what we need to run the one um, foundry. So since we've only got one foundry... We don't need to worry about bringing up the other um, 
iron nodes just yet. Or iron belts, I should say. There we are. For now, that's now plumbed in. So let's chuck in a Mark II belt there. So we need enough to make 23 there. We can do that one. So we've nearly got enough to do the main line there. So it'll get to this bit and just go whoosh. So as you can see, it's... Oh, see, that's Mark 1, it's Mark 2 to there, so it's like, eh, it's just stopped. <laughs> so, very shortly, well, let's just chuck some iron in there. We have started making our first steel ingots. So, like always, we'll have it be pumped out. Straight into storage. Now, this only makes um, 45 per minute, so it's twice the resources producing 45 per minute. So, a Mark 1 belt is exactly what you need to make to maintain your flow rate. Um, you don't need extra than that. But as you can see, it's a lot different than your usual iron ingots. So, it looks cool. So, there we are. We've got our first section of um, coal getting made. So we know we could have about three of these machines with our current supply lines because that would be 135 because um, it's, what, 45 by 3. So, yeah, 135. My math isn't that bad. <laughs> but we've only got 120 belts. But the great thing is, with the fact that we're going to be making steel, which then leads to the processing of... Um, making Mark III belt stuff, we instantly can upgrade it to make even more and more. And you can see where this is going anyway. So let's go get some more Mark II stuff for now. 61 on that. 61 on that. Very nice. Uh, we need 25 of those, so... Oh, did we end up using that in the um, foundry? I didn't pay attention. We did. We ended up using 10 of it. For now, this is just what we have to do. But we've got enough rotors, as you can tell. Um, we've got plenty of the iron bars. And so, yeah, once we've finished making this, we'll be able to go unlock the vehicle transport. But then we also... Um, We'll be able to unlock um, advanced steel production after that. And so you need actually um, uh, 45 to do another two foundries. And also unlock this level. So we'll keep building for a little bit. But as I've said, um, certain things like the, obviously, the reinforced iron plate, it's uncommon for us to um, manually make that anymore, so I've kind of kept that promise as much as I can. Um, and, like, we're never manually making any concrete or iron plate or copper plate or anything or even you know the wire or the cable or anything like that that's the advantage of getting you know your permanent bit of factory put in place because once it's done you can forget about it it's like cool done i'm happy you know so let's get a little bit more of that let's go upgrade those belts before we oh actually no let's go unlock this thing uh but we need to get some more iron rod, which is this one here. Okay, so we'll have to probably get it from down here, I'd say. Nope. What about this one? Oh, there we go. Let's just drop it all off and go one, two, three. So we'll keep some iron rod on us, and we have enough to unlock. 
let's go unlock this level. This is the advantage of having your factory work while you're doing other things. What if that little hand thing shows up again? I didn't do it this time. Milestone reached. Long range transportation, as well as the construction of outposts, is now encouraged. Vehicle stations have built in functionality to refuel and restock or collect parts. So here. We can now make these steel pipes, which is using the um, processed steel into making the pipes. So this stage here, we need to get that making so we can unlock Mark II miners. And then with that, we can also get... This is the um, the steel beam, is what I was talking about earlier. Um, as I said, it kind of looks like an upgraded version of an um, iron plate, in a way. Um, but these two are the things that we can now make with our um, steel production. So we'll actually run it across and have our actual steel uh, constructible area. Um, like from, instead of using um, our this side of our smelting factory, we'll actually run it across to the construction side over here and actually have a separate um, steel making area. So which would be cool. Um, so I'm not going to worry about jump pads. Oh, then again, I've got enough stuff for that. I might as well just do that whenever, once it's ready. Um, but the advanced steel unlocks, as I said, the Mark II miners, which is really going to help us with um, upgrading our resource production. But also, we then really need our um, Mark III belts. So these do 270 resources per minute, which is a huge increase from 120 to 270. You know, usually it's been doubling, so we went from 60 to 120, and now it's gone to 270, which is a plus 30 increase on that as well. So that's a bit of a bonus. But the good thing is, as we start upgrading the Mark II belts, we get the stuff we, you know, all those um, reinforced iron plate back. But also with the steel, which we need the advanced um, steel production unlocked as well. We get encased industrial beams, which is steel and also concrete. So you can see how you're starting to get using so much more steel. Because um, it's used in so many different things, especially for the more advanced stuff. Um, so yeah, here you go. Extracts solid resources from the no blah blah blah. The normal extraction rate is 120 per minute. The extraction rate is modified depending on the resource node purity. Uh, outputs all blah blah blah. Yeah, so it essentially doubles your output, which is awesome. But then we get hypertube, so that way we can start setting up um, hypertube networks to go to uh, places like the. Um, mining area that we set up and then say go from there over to our coal plant and then you know wherever else we want to go and you can actually speed them up with all kind of little tricks and whatnot um but yeah so we've selected that we've got 30 seconds before it's back there's nothing in here getting worked on so but as you can see like we can now if we want to there's things in here that can are now accessible with the steel uh, I think it's, so yeah, here, the um, stators and the pipes, we only could do that once we had the steel unlocked. So, we've progressed. It's actually a major progression, actually. So, what we need to do is figure, is put the walls in for here. So, uh, walls... I want to actually click on the right damn thing. Yes, I stuffed that up. One, two. That should be as high as we need to... Yes. So that would be our... Um, belt deck. And this is going to be our still construction deck up here. I might as well just do this so I can get across it. But uh, we'll do this. 
So we have a little bridge to go across. And our lovely little deck up here. So, get rid of this. But each time we go up a level, we'll have a little bridge so we can go back and forth as we need. Um, yeah. So this will be all for the belt work. So we can hide stuff. That's cool, you know, like, here's our advanced assembler stuff area. And suddenly we're adding steel production on top of it, which is actually involves using constructors mostly. So you wouldn't think we'd have a constructor only deck, but it's um, going to be for our steel. So I wanted to leave the bottom one for all sorts of, if we need to add additional stuff like basically iron plate production or anything like that. You have the room, use the room. So, this will look good in the end, I think. So, what we'll end up doing is have, like, um, say, this one here or something. You'll put this in. And then from across from it, bang here, that one there. And we'll put in, say, oh, actually, no, um, because we'll actually be bringing stuff down from up there. So, yeah, it'll come out from um, this level here. No, sorry, I'll tell a lot. That level there. That's not why, it's just I stuffed up. So, from there, it'll actually come out, go across, and then drop down to here. So, one, two, three, that's this level stuff. So, example, we'll put in a belt like this. Always set up them like that, so it just makes your life easier for when you're doing lifts. So you can literally start your lift from there. And that was a good guess. Looks pretty straight to me. Let's have a look from over here. Ah, oh, it needs to come down one. That's annoying. So what we'll do... Just leave the other one in place. Do that. Yeah, there we go. And that actually looks really good, I reckon. Because it kind of connects stuff between the factories and gives reasons for things being there and, you know... The last thing you want on the outside of your factory is just a big blank wall because it just looks boring. You have something cool on the outside like this, like, you know, um, hypertubes going up and, um, you know, just lifts and that, but the belt's going back and forth. It just adds so much effect and makes your uh, factory look a lot better. So... Usually, most of my factories are all just square blocks. They looked horrible. So, you just looked at it and it's like, cool, it's just a square thing, you know? No look, no, you know, life to it. But, yeah, with the um, practice I've been getting, it's uh, starting to look really good. So, we'll put our um, door frame in here. Some walls in. When I stuff them up and put them in the wrong spot. So.
There we go. Then we can do hypertube stuff later on. We've added some actual effect to the uh, building. It's starting to look pretty big, you know. The structures get huge in the end. But it does look good when you've got that. You could have just done a direct angle straight down, but I reckon that would look stupid. <laughs> Let's go uh, drop some stuff off. Unlock that. And then we can work on the next unlock, being advanced steel production. Which should be this one here, yep. But I just want to get this one done and dusted and out of the way. So jump pads, yo. Several buildings aimed at factory traversal can now be accessed in the build menu. Caution is recommended during use of these products. I don't know anybody who actually really uses them that much. Like, if you want to set up a um, Hyperloop jump and you know somewhere where you're going to land, you can always use them as a way to kind of land safely and not die. <laughs> I'll drop the coal off for the sulfur, making the gunpowder. Get back up and finish off our steel production, eh? There we go. put these walls back in. Ah, stuffed it. Beautiful. It's starting to look good, Jess. Alright, we should have enough to finish off the uh, Mark IIs underground for it. So we don't need to upgrade that bit, just these and this. Alright, so that's Mark 2, II, Mark 2. Helps when I press the wrong freaking button. Mark 2. Mark 2. Just do these as well while I'm here. And then I think we've got to do the um, rest of the Mark 2 upgrades actually f um, underground. So, but, what we'll do is we'll get the other foundries put in. At least two. Really, since we've done our power upgrade, we really actually haven't added many machines to the uh, factory other than... Um, some extractors and this one foundry here we've actually taken stuff away so we're actually using less power really right now so and we went to all that effort to expand our massive power output so 
but we're not even using the full power of one of our um bloody coal power plants. So here we go. Get a little bit of space in between them because we've got the room. Why not, oh? Get the two going. Let's get the uh, collection area for it going. Actually, select steel ingot. Eh? Then we need to do splitters. Oh, I didn't even think of that, did I? <sighs> well, that'll teach me. All right, what I'll do is just that there. Hang on. Of course I did that wrong. And that one. Seriously? There we go. Actually, it might just be as if I just do it yeah, the old-fashioned way. I'm really trying to do it the freaking hard way right now. Don't know why. There. So there we go, with the um, iron ores going in properly now at least. Split off. Problem solved. Which means I need to raise this. Problem solved. I can't believe I did that. Seriously. Maple life super hard then without even trying. Don't know why I did that, but oh well. As I said, we all make my mistakes on this game. If you don't learn from it, then uh, yeah. Get 
rid of this. Doesn't really matter which side they go in. I know that last at the end there um, wasn't identical, but uh, shit happens. So we should be making a nice amount of uh, steel ingots now. Yep. So what we'll do from there is, um, oh, I did it the wrong way. Crap baskets. I wasn't even going to bring it up here. Oops. Oops. So let's fix this up with add on organization. There we are. There we are. Alright, so that actually looks like it's getting held up now. But, this is why I was doing the whole um, deck thing in the first place. I like that. Alright. So now, this is why I was like, eh, you can just run things straight into it, because I wasn't thinking. <sighs> Let's try this again. Because down here on this deck, you don't care about, um stuff overlapping, you can do what I did earlier. Just like this. So you put in your main lines first. So here to here. Here to here. Get rid of this. We'll even get rid of this for now. What we'll end up doing though is we'll use this first iron node for it. I'm doing it this way. 
So your iron node comes in this like that. Then your coal's down here on the end where you'll have multiple rows of your coal. So your coal can go like this. And you do a splitter off it. So... Like that. Then you put your coal line in. Then you grab your Mark 1 belts and chuck them in. Just like that. Oh, didn't mean to do that. But see, under here, it doesn't matter if they cross because you can't see them. And all you do see is when you look down um, the gaps is these lovely feed-in lines, just like that. So it looks good. You have no idea that below they're actually crisscrossing each other and they look horrible down there, but up here works perfectly well. So, yeah. Something I forgot to do there before. So that one's got full iron already. That one can top up. And there we go. So that's restored the production. And you could actually probably fit another one in here if we really wanted to, but... Eh, we might as well, I guess. But, yeah, we can look at that later on um, once we actually start getting what we need to upgrade for level 3s. So, and what you do is from here, we get rid of these blocks. And you put in your drop down from here. Actually, you do it that way, sorry. we are. And at the very end of these, you can actually put in um, mergers directly on the actual um, lifts. And you put your Mark 2s. Oh, actually, it's not going to let you. It's going to be dodgy. So that's fine. Um... Put the mergers here then. Grab that. Now it only has to be Mark 1 to the um, actual uh, merger itself because again the flow rate is only 45 per minute. But your main belt in between here, you put at the highest rate that you can um, get for belts because, as you can see there, this is where everything's going to feed in. So, and to come over to this, we just grab a Mark II, instantly turn it to the right, like that, and feed it there. And now we're sending at the speed of 120 per minute um, steel ingots over to the other factory. Then when we want to get out, we just do this. Close up the hole. And obviously fill in the uh, lovely holes we have here. So... I think if I get rid of this, get rid of that. If 
I do that and yeah, put it there. Uh, you look at that and you can put it in like this. So you can put in a um a walkway thing like this, so it actually blocks off here, and it looks good. Just like that. But between sections like this, we could probably put one of these and put in a, um, a block like that. Which would mean we put a foundation piece in there. Then just put the foundation back. Probably get rid of this and put it in a walk quite like that. Bob's your uncle. You've got a bit of walkway and it gives it a bit of effect. And you can walk around it and you don't have to worry about uh, accidentally falling in. <laughs> Which I have done many, 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 many times. But, uh, we won't go there. So, yeah, that's sending it now all the way over from that little production over to our actual um, assembly building. Which we will actually increase this to Mark 2s because of the uh, speed at which we're um, receiving materials. So, and the good thing is you can actually see the um, the Mark II belt there. So, I'll get rid of this. Should be able to... Oh, we don't have enough. Close, but not enough. Oh, that's the other thing we can do now, since we've got the uh, access to it, is uh, put railings in up here to make it look good. For the bridges, I reckon. I like that. But the only other way we could do the bridge is if we um, did uh, these guys, but uh, yeah. Oh, actually, we're one level too far down. Wow. In that time, we've uh, produced quite a lot. I also upgrade all those to what we need. Got our Mark II's there, so, uh, or did we just downgrade those? Oh no, we did, we did upgrade them. I was suddenly thinking I oh, downgraded them. <laughs> uh, Oh. 
Okay, so let's remove some of the flooring just for now. So we know we're leaving this row here open and that rear row. So this is the row where we can actually do work on if we want to. So we'll actually put the flooring back piece back in here. And so our first assembly machine, move it over a little so we can have a look. And we should have, there we are, steel beams. And then we also need steel pipes. Since we're not producing like a lot of steel just now, so this is 15 per minute. Um, we're producing about 120 per minute in steel, roughly. Um, so we could probably do what? Say one, two, that'd be 30. Probably do four of these, which would take us up. Oh, so it takes, sorry, there's the steel ingot there, it only produces 15 per minute. So we'd have one of these. Um, and what's it take? Or how much does it take in building? steel pipe. Alright, so we can do two of these, which would give us uh, 40 per minute, and that one would only give us 15 per minute. So, but that would use all 120 of our steel. So you can see how easy it is to deplete your steel production, even with everything we've just gone through to provide the resources for it. So, yeah, it doesn't go very far. So... Get rid of this and that for now. Because they'll need to go like that. This one needs to go like that as well, but to there. Because they'll be down for further lines. Alright, so, uh, Mark 2, actually let's do that and that, we'll leave it there, and so we'll actually move these back a little in a minute. So, but well, they're going to be in the same spot, so we'll do a splitter. There. Splitter. Splitter. Then we do a lift. And we know we only need Mark 1 lifts. So we'll move this back just a little bit. There we are. So we'll put a uh, foundation piece back in here. Scroll down two tabs. Grab us number seven. And we'll put in these instead. Yes, the foundations can actually overlap, if you do it wrong. So, they're connected up. Let's move this one back. Usually, like, um, this production row would all be um, steel beams for us. I wouldn't mix and match. But, um, in this regard, we're going to. 
because this is just our basic. We need some getting produced so that we can actually um, then um, move on to making more and more better stuff. So steel beam, steel, oh, sorry, steel pipe, steel pipe. And this one will be steel beam. Um, we need power. So the good thing is we can actually close this wall off now. Uh, we need to do wiki. Roughly there. Connect it up. And power one there, and connect drop. There we go. We've started our first um, steel production. So while it's getting made, we can chuck what we've actually gathered already on us into that. Let's put in some um, storage boxes. So like these machines will stay what they are. They'll just end up changing what they're processing. So the great thing is we don't actually have to change much of what we've done here. Crap, I need to go get an iron rod so I can do the steel box. Hey, that was fun. All right, so leave some in the box. And there we are. So there's steel production going, guys. We'll just connect these up. And essentials of what we've been needing is now connected up and will constantly run due to the ratios that we've um, done. Um, we won't have any supply issue with it, really. Um, the only thing that might not work 100% efficient is the um, foundries. Now, guys, look, I'm going to love you and leave you today for now. Um, I've got something I have to go do with my pooch. Um, I just wanted to finish that off real quick for you to show <clears throat> uh, how to do it. And once I finish what I'm doing, I will start another stream up later on. So thank you for joining me. It's been great for the support, guys. I will see you again soon.